Hello everyone, I'm Jacob. I play Titla. Uh, she's a ranger. Uh, Titla's in Barovia because she's tagged along with some friends and somebody needs to look after them. Hi, I'm Haz and I'm playing the character of Theodore Ursa, uh, Satyr uh, Circle of the Moon Druid, whose main motivation is to, to find a good revel and turn into a giant angry fey bear to protect his friends, particularly his best bud, Titla. Hello, I'm Josh, and I shall be playing Killian Maxwell, a elf celestial warlock who has been travelling around Barovia for a little while and has joined up with the Tempest Guild to try and find his place. G'day, my name's Tom. Uh, I'm playing Jonor, the Asimar divination wizard. He is here to find the best and the worst of this world, and he's doing it with a bit of naivety and optimism. Hello, I am Raf, and I'm playing Styx, who is a gloom-forged paladin, um, on the journey of rediscovering themselves, quite literally, in the land of Barovia. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of our Curse of Strahd 5th edition campaign. A warning, gentle viewer. Curse of Strahd is a horror-themed Dungeons & Dragons campaign, which means you may hear adult language or adult themes throughout this episode. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Welcome Ooh. back, everybody, to the Lost Archives. We are here. We are playing the premier horror Dungeons & Dragons campaign, Curse of Strahd. Now, with the new 2024 oh. rules. That's right. We have pretty much made the final switch over to the new 5th edition rules, the 2024 5th edition, and um, we're running with all of the new rules in place, which is very, very exciting. Still all of our original homebrew rules. I don't think we've had to change any of our... Um, homebrew rules especially not the sanity and injury tables which i fucking love um but everything else we've pretty much updated all to the new stuff which is really really awesome um last week we had our special curse of blinsky halloween special thank you all so much for coming and joining us for that it's always a lot of fun to do the curse of blinsky gives me a chance to just throw random shit uh, at the players and do voices that i normally uh, wouldn't do in a curse of strad campaign like the voice of a furby which was uh, lots of fun. Um, hearing that back was, I because it's, it's you hear like a voice as you do it, but it's a very different experience hearing it through headphones recorded, played back at you. Um, and uh, I, I, I think I didn't quite appreciate how annoying that voice was until I heard it back when I was editing the video. I spared a bean pretty quick. Yeah, I was going to say like the application of a bean was quite good. Thank you for that. It spared me from doing that voice for too long. Um, yeah, yikes. That's uh, that's a horrific voice. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, legally distinct Furby called Clawby. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that was loads of fun. So thank you everybody who joined us for the Halloween special. We are now back with regular programming for our normal Curse of Strahd session. We have one apology tonight. Unfortunately, uh, Raph isn't able to make it uh, tonight, so I'll be playing the character of Grinner. Um, hopefully we'll see him next week. He's had some stuff going on um, that's taking him away from the sessions. Jacob's pointing at him right now on the overlay and shaking his head and looking judgmental. Um, hopefully we'll see Raph next week. Uh, that'd be really really awesome i hope you hope you can join us again otherwise i'll i'll just keep playing grinner uh, we're at a sort of a key point where it's hard for me to hand wave grinner out of the, <laughs> the castle so i'll i'll just that's all right i could play grinner i could do his voice now i think so we'll stick with that um it's easier than sticks it's a lot easier than sticks that's true it's why i forced him to play grinner for this little chapter so that if he was away i could i could at least do the voice convincingly um he did he did also discuss wanting to play sergeant gavel which i strongly discouraged i'm very pleased that i did because that's that's a harsh voice to do uh, i cannot I'm maintain sergeant, sergeant gavel, i can't maintain sergeant gavel for longer than about half an episode otherwise and and even then like, not the with next that attitude. no that's true it's a good point i should just try harder yeah with his singing voice surely sergeant gavel would be a bard right level eight bard Oh, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> Can you imagine that singing voice? Country road, take me yeah. home. Actually, it, actually, that actually worked. Pretty yeah. um, that worked. It, it actually worked. Yeah, I was expecting that to be a disaster. Uh, in terms it's of other, it's all country music. It's but. all country music. Uh, in terms of other fun announcements, I, I don't think we've got any other fun, crazy announcements to share. Just that we're really excited to be jumping in. Uh, oh, there is one thing. Once I finish up with the, so I've been I've been doing a redesign of um, a couple of the character arts, um, particularly Niles from the Return of the Giants campaign. Um, it was just ready for me to come back and, and give a bit more care and attention, and uh, make some changes to the design of the character after the events that we've been playing through, as well as the changes we've kind of made to the world lore as we've gone on. Um, we sort of adapted things, so it's it's a good opportunity for me to come back and and fix up that character art. 
The next thing I'm going to do after that is go through and do a little bit of an update of some of the Curse of Strahd characters as well. Some of you have acquired some new items that are particularly important to your characters and your uh, appearance heading forwards. Um, some of you have suffered horrific injuries that I want to reflect in the artwork as well. So... <laughs> uh, the grave's gone now. <laughs> So I will, uh, I will spend a little bit of time uh, over the next couple of weeks as we head into December, uh, making sure that we get some extra extra updates to the Curse of Strahd artwork. Um, there is one character as well that does need a little bit of a redesign for the proportions, and that is Killian. Um, Killian Killian's character does not look homogenous with the rest of them because uh, I pretty much used one reference for it, and that was the Hero Forge mini that <laughs> Josh sent me. So the proportions match what you get on the Hero Forge, which is designed to 3D print and look awesome. Translated to 2D, some of the proportions don't quite look as good. Killian, I think, comes off looking a bit dwarvish in the way that his proportions kind of work on the artwork, which is, he's not a dwarf. So I, I think I might do a bit of a redesign of Killian too. And, and I feel like the metal's not quite as shiny as I want it to be. So I might do a little bit of an update of Killian's artwork too. We also now need to reflect Killian's regained hand too so there's another reason to come back and mm. fix up killian um so yeah i'll be i'll be doing a little bit of a redesign of some of the character artwork um and obviously theo you need your uh, owlbear skin hood very important yeah he's so excited <laughs> so we'll definitely make sure we do that uh cool i think i think they're the only fun announcements i have to share anything else fun to share before we jump into the session no nothing wrong looking good no awesome let me do our recap and let us jump straight back in. A little bit of a longer recap because it has been three weeks and Jacob's gone. Uh, it has been three weeks. He doesn't want to hear the long the long recap. Any uh, other announcements? Nope. Why? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about me directly. It's about me and other people. Exit the chat. Um, oh, he's back. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do our recap. Slightly longer recap so that we can I'm get I'm glad back my in. protest has been noted. Yes, it has been. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with it, but it has been noted. Um, so, okay. our series has been following the adventures of the Tempest Adventuring Guild, Theo, Jonor, Tithla, Styx, and Killian. Having become trapped within the realm of Barovia while searching for some missing adventurers, the team are now preparing to take the fight to Strahd and Sergei. On a mission to recruit allies and arm themselves, the team have travelled to the ruined fortress of Arginvostholt. With the fortress once housing a noble order of knights led by a silver dragon, the team were hoping to find some assistance and possibly a fragment of Styx's sunsword within. Instead, the crumbling ruin housed only the dead, revenants unable to pass on and seemingly trapped in the memories of their deaths. Attempting to recruit these undead knights, the team discovered that to gain their assistance, they would need to break the curse placed upon them. That would be recovering the skull of the silver dragon Arginvost from Castle Ravenloft. Committed to this course of action, the team was suddenly surprised by a black carriage arriving outside the broken keep, led by an old friend. Grinna, had returned to escort the party to Castle Ravenloft for dinner, revealing he had been spending some significant time trying to form an alliance with Strahd in the hopes of taking down Sergei. Feeling something was a little off, Killian used his warlock powers to pierce through illusions and reveal that Grinner was indeed now an undead. With this knowledge shared with the group, Grinner revealed that Strahd had indeed turned him into a vampire spawn. The team, who were obviously a bit nervous about this new development, uh, Grinna decided to reveal some more information to earn their trust. Uh, the village of Barovia had been brutally attacked each night by hordes of the undead, and fearing for the safety of the villagers, Grinna asked the party for assistance, either to help defend the town or to find a safe place for the people to flee. After passing by the embattled village, signs of fortifications and an archer's nest being constructed, the group entered the grounds of Castle Ravenloft. After quickly changing into more appropriate attire, the team entered the dining room, and awaiting them was the master of Castle Ravenloft, Strahd von Zarevich. After a little bit of tension over Grinner's transformation into a vampire spawn, the group were invited to sit and enjoy some food and drink with Strahd and his new bride, Katarina. Taking their seats, ensuring they were seated as far away from the vampires as they could, the dinner started off a little cold and awkward. As delicious and personalised meals were served to the party, the conversation warmed up a little, both sides using the opportunity to gain a bit of information from the other. Strahd soon turned to business, outlining the current situation with his brother Sergei and proposing an alliance to break the balance of power and destroy his brother for good. Before the team could get into the details further though, 
The butler Rahadan burst into the room, interrupting Strahd. Expressing his displeasure at this situation, Strahd strode out of the room with Rahadan, requesting the party enjoy some food and drinks in his absence, and that he would be returning shortly. Taking advantage of their host's sudden absence, Tithla, Theo, and Killian bailed on dinner to search the castle for Arginvos' skull, making their way stealthily upstairs. After exploring the first floor, they stumbled upon an elderly man chained to a desk, papers and scrolls littering the room all around him. Showing the man kindness and a bit of medical attention, Tithla learned his name was Leif and that he had been kept at Ravenloft to keep track of the finances for the past 16 years. Heading upstairs, we left off last session as the trio stopped before a large set of double doors. Shadowed figures lurking in the alcoves nearby, suddenly falling apart into two massive swarms of rats. And that is where we left off last session. And right on time, we have had one of the lovely Twitch viewers, Bryn Brassax, redeem a monster. I will give you the CR momentarily. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going don't to. Don't worry about it. I will give you the CR nah, don't worry about it. momentarily, Bryn. I think um, we have more important updates before that. Um, you just left a couple things out of the update. I I wouldn't, uh, what did I leave out? Probably vital okay. the plot of the story. Uh, for the food that we had, we had entrees. Uh, two of us ordered roast. Uh, very, very typical entree meal. Two of us had roast. Um, anyone else got any things they want to mention before we get into this deadly combat where we die or everyone's happy to just die? No, right. no one wants to help vamp with me. All right, cool. <laughs> just me then. Go team. Thanks for the help, guys. Right. Billy. <laughs> um CR is going to be um is going to be around 10. That is going to be our CR. No. So it can add up to 10 or it can be a total of 10. Right. If you're looking for an example of a CR10 creature, a stone golem is a great example of a CR10 creature. I'll type it in chat too, just so we know. Don't do it. Perfect. CR10. Yeah, so it can be it can as long as it adds up to 10, that's fine. Um I will put a moratorium on um quarter or Look. half uh cr ratings at this point in the game i am not managing 20 cr half monsters or 40 cr quarter monsters <laughs> go fuck yourself uh, <laughs> um, cr one I is the one minimum. i want to throw out there you don't have to get up to 10 you could stick it like you can four. you can just say you can just Wrap say a cr2 10. monster if you want don't they don't no, don't be that. a go to cr12 and just bargain him down get the most value for your channel points look if, if there's a really want, if there's no one doesn't have the ball to kill any of us unless we deliberately do it like grinner so throw what you want us has you know has a spoken if you want to go up tithler. to if you kill the favorite <laughs> tithler i dare you and if yeah. she dies know it's your fault um it's like yeah, feel feel free, feel free. If 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 you if you also want to, if there's a really cool monster that you got in mind that's like CR eleven or CR twelve, I can always do difficulty adjustments. That's easy. I like a Tarask. Now, Owen, question Hello. for you. Yes, Josh. Really important question that Hello. might that might sway the audience. Oh, okay. If somebody else was to now summon a creature, yeah. could those two be included in the same encounter? And they um, fight each other. Yeah, like, oh, and we got a <laughs> I I normally do balance encounters, and so the CR ten is balanced so that it would be a hard encounter for you. It's certainly not going to be medium or easy. Um, if if we were to have two CR ten encounters with the four of you at level eight, that would be impossible for you to win. I probably would rebalance the monsters a little bit. That's fair. I just thought I'd I need a nap before this. <laughs> Jonah's going to yeah. take a nap regardless, so don't try that. Don't try that bullshit on us, Tim. Do the walk through. Just give us eight hours. Thanks. Uh, it is. It is very appropriate. We are now going to actually jump. I know we left on a bit of a cliffhanger with the rat swarm suddenly emerging from the shattered alcoves, but we're actually going to step back a moment in time. Jonah, we're going to jump back into the dining room just before the rest of the group left. Katarina had walked up to you had a quick word with you about the gift or the item that she had promised to help you locate inside the castle and had actually headed outside with you leaving the dining room which then left Tithla, Theo and Killian alone with Grinner uh, which kind of precipitated this this exploration of the castle unsupervised. So Jonor we're going to jump back in time with you as Katarina um, turns to you inside the dining room. Jonor I, I, I did promise that I would help you locate the crystal ball if if um, 
if my husband is is going to be what? otherwise indisposed, intriguing. We could use this opportunity. Very intriguing to... object. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, if you wouldn't mind following me, uh, I'll lead you down towards. Uh, well, follow me. I'll take you to it. Absolutely. Perfect. I um, follow in her footsteps and go in the direction they went, they are. Um, <clears throat> happily breaking away from the group in seek of this item. As you exit the dining hall with Katarina, you can see Strad and Rahadan still walking away. It was pretty quickly after they left that Katarina turned to you and invited you to, to follow her. As you look down the hallway back towards the main entrance, you can see Rahadan uh, hurrying to keep up with Strad's very wide stride as he makes his way across the stone floors, moving towards the stairs leading upwards. As he gets to the base of the stairs, you watch as he pauses for a moment and turns to look back at Rahadan. You can't quite make out what he's saying, but you can see the look of not anger per se, but frustration. A sense of of frustration and disappointment on his face as he turns to Rahadan and says something. You watch as Rahadan bows very, very deeply and takes off heading towards the east through the set of double doors that you guys hadn't explored through yet back in that main dining hall. And on you, that, yeah, yeah. do you reckon would we been in sight of him? Would would he would Strad think we'd see him do that? Yeah, it looks like his yeah, focus and attention me. isn't on you or Katarina. In fact, it doesn't look like he's even noticed you or Katarina at this point, but you are within eyesight. It's just a straight line, probably about 80 feet down the corridor. Uh, to where Strad is standing. Sure. Cool. All right, well, um, Katarina, I'm happy to come have a little bit of a look here. I've just realized I'm poking around this castle. Is this, is this okay? Um, well, if you're with, if you're with me, I, I don't think it should be too much of a problem. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we don't go sure. to any of the areas where, uh, where my husband would not want you to be found. Uh, we'll avoid Places that are off limits to guests normally, but um, where we're headed shouldn't be a problem. Kind of dangerous, or um, there are places in this castle that could pose a danger to you, and we won't be going anywhere near them. Uh, we'll be passing by the second floor quite quickly. Um, I'm going to take you down towards the gallery. Uh, we're not going to be going too far. Yeah, sure. Um, we'll lead the way. Um, and as we go through there, I'm looking for other uh, artwork which we saw when we transported into this realm so the anything that helps move. piece the story together that's yeah. just a passive lookout yeah 100 percent. do you want to bro actually what's your what's your passive perception ah like 12 11 do you want to do you want to roll a perception check you, given that you're actively looking out for this i'm happy for you to roll a perception or investigation sure. check your choice yeah well that's a perception uh what, what would it be if it was an investigation i was a bit slow Plus, um, <clears throat> because he's looking, or he look, honestly, he's he's looking around. He's looking around. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah. As you as you glance around, following along behind Katarina, the passageways that she leads you down are sparsely decorated. This section of the castle, this this ground floor, it looks like once there probably were beautiful tapestries hanging from hooks upon the walls. You can see where the, the nails are still driven into the stone that would have once housed tapestries. The stone itself, you can see outlines where the stone itself has faded and, and coloured differently, where the outlines of tapestries once stood. But there are none hanging now. Thin layer, the thin patina of dust along the corners and edges of the, the walls where they join the floors hints that perhaps there were once beautiful tapestries that have degraded and turned to dust, have fallen apart and been removed from this gallery and not yet replaced. The whole time you've been in this castle, Jonor, there's been this sense of age, this great sense of watchfulness, this unquiet feeling of time that has passed by and with your divination powers, you're particularly susceptible. At times as you walk through, you can almost hear the calls of those long dead ghosts who walked these halls many, many generations ago. Katarina leads you through a series of corridors, not really pausing to give you much chance to explore or to focus. She chats idly as she walks by, asking questions, checking in to see how you're doing and, and making sure that you're Okay. 
I'm actually, I'm happy to roleplay that. Actually, it makes perfect sense that she, yeah, we actually let's roleplay that. So, how's everything been since I last caught up with you, Lot? Um, it's been some time since the winery. Uh, everyone's okay. You last I checked, you um, you'd all uh, come back from taking on some druids or something, right? Yeah, well, <clears throat> having a, a fine meal like this is a, the perfect type of restoration we need. But I really just don't understand how you can conjure up these these amazing meals for like so quickly. It's impressive. Oh, do, uh, do you get meals yourself that uh you, you desire as well? I, I haven't I haven't eaten uh, a huge amount of the food here the last uh, day or so. But um, yes, when I first came to the castle. Um, there are two cooks, uh, one in particular who, who is who's quite good. I mean, Stra did bring in um, one of the uh, one of the cooks from Barovia to come and assist, um, Rawdon Gamsey, and um, he he did provide. I think we did jokingly call him that last session, didn't we? Yeah, I can see Jacob nodding. Cool. I couldn't remember exactly which chef I'd spoofed for that. Uh, no, that was me laughing at like a feeling like that was the first time I'd heard it. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Did I? I thought I did say that last time. Or did I say Amy? You might have. Amy I Jolliver. Was, I couldn't remember which one it was. Pretty sure that was, it was exactly that, what you yeah. said. I thought it was um, Gamzy. Gamzy. Still Rory. hilarious. Thank you. Um, yes, and, and, and I mean, it, it's, been, it's been wonderful having access to such fine food and, and fine wine. It's something I'm not so uh, accustomed to here in Barovia. It's, it's very rare we get to so enjoy that, the finer I'll, things. Yep, having these nice meals would have been, would have been quite nice, but <clears throat> you you know, I I can't help but notice the eyes. Is how how was feeling awkwardly asking what could be a personal question? How, how was the um, the transformation? Um, you watch as she pauses and takes in a slow, shuddering breath, Jonor, almost as if she's torn on how to answer that question. Could you make me an insight check, please? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good question, Jonor. 20. Jonor, there's an initial reaction. She wants to say something. She wants to tell you. And then it's almost like she stops herself and says the following instead. And you can tell with a 20, this is something she's been told to say she doesn't really believe this this isn't her words they sound like something they sound like someone else sure. well it wasn't wasn't painful at all i, I was a bit worried uh, it was very quick and I, i'm much happier well avoiding pain is well you can't ask for anything better in barovia then i'd say that kind of nodding at a dodging of the topic like she wants to answer you Jonah. she wanted to answer that question honestly but something mm. something stopped her and she didn't well another thing which strikes me is how, how did you know about this um, particular item i'm i'm very intrigued oh um I, i've always been a little bit interested in the uh in the occult um I, I always sort of fancied myself as, as one day taking up magic and playing around with it. I, I just never had the opportunity or the schooling. And well, I mean, I, there's plenty of books in the library and I've had a bit of a chance to, to pour through some of them. And, and I, I think I'll have time now and an opportunity to learn magic. But, but I would absolutely happy to help in, uh, in those regards. Just whatever you see I can do. Let me anything that you see I can do. Happy, happy to help. It's very kind of you, Jono. Thank you. I, I might take you up on that offer. Um, Strad has offered to teach me some things he knows as well, and he's quite a powerful magic wielder. The, the weave uh, responds to him in a way I've not seen before. Um, just left up here, follow me. <laughs> As she sort of nervously Absolutely. turns a corner. The room that she it leads you into. Um, oh, sorry, you go. No, no, you go, you go. No, no, you go. Oh, just... just uh just like brothers hey maybe something running in the family that i've come across a book which um really shows some intuitive from from his uh, his sibling intuitive magic use as you mentioned his sibling you watch as she pauses for a moment her hand resting on the doorknob of a, a large oaken door separating this corridor from a, a room beyond 
You watch as she pauses for a second, nods, and turns around to you, catching your eyes with hers. The blood red irises, very striking in her uh, in her very pale face, standing out almost as if they're glowing slightly. Jonor. Yes. Yes, I have heard a lot about Sergei in the last few days. I, I mean, I, I knew a little bit. Um, rumors and whispers of a, a dark undead force lurking in the shadows of the Amber Temple, but I hadn't fully grasped how much of a threat, how much of a threat he, he is. I think... We've only had a... There you go. Sorry, she, she pause, no, she pauses as... She pauses. As soon as you talk, she stops herself. The, the grim depiction. I only had a glance when, um, only had a glance at such evil things, and yet everything like that is probably true. Yes. There is no greater threat to Barovia, and I do hope, I do hope you are able to do something about him. The sibling. Something final. The threat he poses is... too great. And what's that What's that threat? Well, what's, the undead what's the threat, threat, threat? To you? The undead threat? Well, probably not to me anymore now that I'm safe in the castle. <laughs> but the people of Barovia, the village below us, uh, Valaki, Kresk... The undead horde. There are a lot of bodies buried in Barovia, Jonah. A lot of di- a lot of dead. Thousands of years of corpses that Sergei can call upon at a moment's notice. The dead far outnumber the living, and he gives them a hunger. A hunger that will sweep across this land and leave nothing but bones. He needs to be stopped. That did not. That did not sound like a uh, res- scripted response. That sounded like her genuine thoughts. But can I get an? In- I want to check insight for that. Well, I'm actually happy to use your. She- I'm happy to use your twenty already, Jonah. You're already keyed into kind of listening and figuring out what she's about. You don't need to roll again, Jonah. Okay. She be- cares. She believes this fully. There's more she's not saying for sure. Like. She went the pause before she said the sibling and then the sudden refocus on Sergei. There's more there, but she can't or won't share it. But her her fear of Sergei and, and that grim depiction she just painted, that's not just something she's been coached to say. She does genuinely believe that. Or is and is genuinely concerned about the threat Sergei poses to, to life in general. Because I guess, and this is this is a point, Jono, where you have a moment to kind of put this together. Sergei doesn't need the people of Barovia to be alive. If anything, it's better for him if they're all dead. Because then they're going to work for him. Strahd needs them alive. He needs blood. So even if their lives are miserable, technically, in this specific instance... <laughs> mm you can see why her focus might be on one more than the other and if and if it's a situation sure. of where the people had to pick between the two life or undead servitude it's not great Dad, either way <laughs> it's not great either way but you can now see why why people have made some of the choices they've sure. made and i think i think with that 20 that's kind of the moment where Jono, you put these puzzle pieces together and kind of realize oh yeah <laughs> A lich doesn't need living people. In fact, it's it's counter to everything he's working towards to have anyone alive. He doesn't want that. But a vampire needs oh, sure. living people. Uncorrupted, un... Um, mutilated. Like, he needs people alive to produce blood. At the bare minimum, <laughs> they need oh, to sure. be able to make more yeah. blood. <laughs> they need to be refilled Makes every few weeks. <laughs> a lot of sense. Yeah. And uh, a future like that is really quite grim... And, well, trying to know what the future holds is, would be really quite important, hey? Yes, I, I, I've always admired people who can look into the future. I, I, I once bumped into a fortune teller in these lands, one of the Vistani. She is the one who, I guess, kind of inspired me, put me on the path I'm on, in a way, with, with magic and understanding things. Have you met her? Um, 
Madame Ava. Ava? Eva. Ava. Am I still under Strahd's uh, charm? Jonor. He gave me a charm. You are a little bit, yes. <laughs> but to be fair, that is only to Strahd, the charm. Yeah. So yeah. it only it only affects while he went away. Yeah. It only affects your interactions with Strahd. Because so yeah, basically the way I the charm good. works is you see Strahd as a friend or an ally. Hmm. We definitely have heard of Zora's of a, a, a Madame Eva, I believe, and that she is Vistani and does tell people stories of uh, fortune telling. And look, with my, my powers I've been collecting along the way, I've, I'm really starting to... It's hard to go wrong with him. I haven't gone wrong so far. Yes, you your know, cards. can do could really... Of course. Yes, I... Yes, your cards. I, I saw... I saw Madame Ava use a similar... A similar deck. Did she teach you your card magic? Mm. Or is that something that the, the fortune telling with cards? Did you learn that yourself? Um, I, uh, I picked up this one just on the entry into the land of Barovia. So this... This is sort of a, a random coincidence. I happen to have this. It's, you know, people say things aren't a coincidence around here, but this, it, you know, I'm, I'm starting to believe that a bit more. Maybe it was meant meant to end up in my hands. Hmm. I, I, I mean, sometimes it is comforting to feel or to to know that there is a, a a mind or a purpose guiding our actions and the actions of those around us. It's nice to think that sometimes. She smiles and nods. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the tune of having a, a outcomes we all want, a future we all want to live in, having this, uh, this what was it, some sort of crystal ball? Yes. Having Sorry. This in an untainted... Sorry, I've been standing here at the door to the gallery yapping on. Please, come inside. And with that, you watch she turns the handle and opens the door, heading into the room. The room beyond is much larger than you were anticipating, Jonal. The corridor leading to it was about five foot wide, six foot tall, and felt a bit out of the way. I mean, you've been moving around the corridors towards the back of the castle for a good little bit as you've walked. But the room beyond is almost as large as a ballroom. The roof towers above you, easily pushing through up into the second floor. But there are no doors or passageways or even alcoves above you this room is almost almost like a chapel added on to a, a castle in a way this large ceiling with vaulted wooden beams high above you and all around you can see display cases pedestals shelving with all manner of items displayed across it trophies in a way mm. And as you begin to head through into the room, you watch as Katarina pauses for a moment and places a hand upon one of the flagstones in front of you. As she does, as a hand is placed upon the stone, you watch as for a moment a glowing sigil of red, arcane magic brightens for a moment and then fades away to nothing, disappearing. As she stands up, dusts her hands off, she smiles, gestures towards the far left-hand corner of the room, far towards the northwest. Oh, come, follow me, it's just over this way. Absolutely. You didn't burn your hand on that. She holds up her fingers. No, no. I just had to disable the security measures. That wouldn't be... wouldn't be fun. Sure. Look, it's... I mean, Strahd's probably got this place down packed. All, all security everywhere. That doesn't really surprise me at all. Jonah, as you pass by the shelves and the display cases, there are items here clearly not from Barovia. It looks like Strahd has taken trophies from many, many lands. The adventurers who occasionally wander into his realm, leaving behind items of power. A plumed silver helmet. Pegasus white feathers rising from the top as the helmet hovers in place inside a glass display cabinet, catches your eye. And then your eye is drawn to a red ruby gem in the shape of a heart, bound to a golden chained amulet, resting atop a a luxurious purple velvet cushion and finally 
your eye catches a sight you were not expecting. A sword made of silver and electrum hanging from a hook on the wall that looks almost identical to Styx's sun sword, but complete, unbroken. And the sword gives off a faint, soft glow, very light pulse as it hangs upon the wall. I would be, so there's two things I'm looking out for. One is Argenbos. Um, and secondly is Crystal Ball. That sword, I would, I'm trying to not act surprised if I see Argenbos. I probably wouldn't have expected to see a sword there. No. Um, yeah. As Katarina catches your appraising eye as you stare at the sword on the wall, she nods. Ah, oh, yes, uh, a replica of the sun sword. Um, sword that, uh, well, <laughs> You watch as she grows quiet and almost sad for a moment, Jonor. <laughs> Important sword uh, from Strahd's past. Um, but yeah, it's a replica of it. The real one was destroyed long, long ago. Um, but it's a pretty replica. Yeah, I mean, the, the glowing just caught my eye. It's, you know, light movement just draws the attention. <laughs> Very pretty. Um, you haven't. No, never mind. Um, this way. The crystal ball's just over here on the pedestal. And as she walks Ooh. past, standing in front of you, on a wooden pedestal journal, you see a beautiful, crystal clear orb. Roughly about 30 centimetres in diameter, the orb rests atop a pedestal made of probably brass or copper. It's hard to say. The legs of which have been carved into claw-like feet. But the ball itself isn't mounted or contained within the metal braces. It's sitting freely atop it. And as you approach the orb, you begin to watch swirls of color. This like smoky, almost like smoky consistency as it moves across the surface. Your image distorted and reflected upside down back at you as you approach it. But soon the clouds of discoloration begin to mask the world around the orb, removing the reflections from its surface. And for a moment, you swear you can see an inner light from within. And that is where we're going to jump back to the others momentarily. They have waited patiently enough to be fucked over by rats. So let's rock and roll. Um, <laughs> I can see Haz is very excited. Did we... I just, I've got to quickly double check. I've been so focused on the... Um, on the conversation between Katarina and Jonah, have we had the item chosen, uh, the monster chosen? Not yet, that's okay. Um, in terms of thematics, uh, no, whatever you want. I can I can retexture and make anything work. Pick something a, pick, fun. Something like fun. Like low-key. Yeah, something yeah. sort of supposed to be friends, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You think, well, no, maybe no, another, no friend. maybe another Clawby. Someone Grunner. Hello, I'm Clawby. Oh, yeah, I'm Clawby. CR10 green. I, I have a um I have a Katarina question. Hello. Uh, it could be that my memory's failing me, yeah. but has she mentioned the fact that Styx isn't with us? Because she did meet Styx. Uh she did initially when you guys first arrived. I believe she mentioned um Oh, did she? Maybe not. She pr she probably would have. Uh if I have not already had that question, allow me to retcon. Uh, as you first arrived, Katarina would pause and goes, Is Styx not oh dinner, he doesn't eat. <laughs> she says that. And then is Sticks okay? And then if you'd assured her Sticks is fine, she would have nodded and smiled and not not really probed much further. Stroud and would have interrupted. What if we didn't? What if you didn't assure her Sticks was fine? Then she would definitely in this moment turn to Jonor. So are you delaying getting fucked over by rats? Because in this moment, if you didn't right. share that Sticks is fine, Jonor, Katarina right. will turn to you before you start approaching the crystal ball and go. And, and Sticks is Sticks okay? I haven't. I hope he's all right. I haven't. Is there a reason he didn't come? Was he? Now nah, now's probably a good time to say we would have just said yes. Yeah, Sticks is Thank fine. Thank you very much. Perfect. Sticks is fine. Yep. Um. Tithla, Theo, and Killian. I'm going to bring you across to a map because we're going to need it. Um, <laughs> do you need to, though, is I, the question. Uh, let me rephrase. I'm going to bring you across to a map because I want to watch you guys get fucked up in, in full HD. So, here's what happens. Um, could I please get all of you to roll initiative, please? Do we have to? Yes, you do. Please okay, click on your tokens first. Before we do it? Can you what, sorry? Not click on our oh no, I rolled the natural one. It's That's very fly. easy for me if you click on your tokens first. If you don't click on your tokens, it's very slightly annoying for me. Did you not click on your token? 
No, no, no. I just, I just wanted to, to reveal to, to Jacob that there was some way he could be very slightly annoying to you. I know, but I, I don't, I don't want to actually piss Owen off. I just want to just slightly prod him so that he doesn't realize that he's getting annoyed until he explodes. No, I'm fully aware of what it's like to, to deal with you for any length of time, Jacob. It's okay. <laughs> 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 that was probably a bit mean. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let me quickly pull open the stat block for Swarm of Rats and let's rock and roll. Um, here's what happens. As... As the figure, so let me just repaint the scene again. So you had currently headed upstairs, passing by uh, Leaf after he gave you a very uh, non-committal recommendation to head upstairs if you were looking for the skull of Arginvost. After Tithla had been so kind and so um, gentle with him and, and made a bit of a point to try to heal him and, and f deal with the, the, the burns and calluses around his legs from the manacles. As you headed upstairs, um, you arrived at a corridor that led to a set of beautifully engraved double doors. On the sides of the two doors, though, were these shadowy figures set back in alcoves. And as you approached them to get a bit of a closer look, you watched as the figures crumbled apart, as they almost seemed to come apart into these various tiny furred shapes, which were soon revealed to be swarms of rats, which rushed across the cobblestones and began digging their claws and teeth into your clothes and flesh. Uh, so, with our initiatives... Let's chuck on some epic music too. Uh, with our initiatives, it looks like we have Tithla with a natural one on five. I did hear you call out natural one in a crying voice before. Killian on 15, Theo on 11. Um, and let me also quickly roll for the rats. Uh, the rats are going first with an 18. Let's have our initiatives. <laughs> What was that? Well, there's like 700 of them. Of course, one of them's going to roll well. I've rolled, I rolled group initiatives because I'm not dealing with uh, swarms of rats as individuals. I absolutely do not have the time, patience, or care for that kind of bullshittery. Um, here's what happens. As the rats begin to pour across the ground and rush over you, um, Tithla, you are quickly engulfed by these rats. Being the person sort of right out in front, the rats immediately swarm over your body. Um, cool, cool, cool. Theo as well. Actually, Killian, you're kind of safe from this as you are standing right behind Tithla and Theo. The fuck? You are, you are actually kind of spared the initial rush of rats as they swarm over Tithla and Theo. Um, Tithla standing up tall and looking at the rats in their eyes because they're the same height. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, that's a that's a real problem. Um, do you want me to? How, how can I? How can I make this right? Um, either make it quick or make it end. Make it end. <laughs> <laughs> As in make like Tithla end. This happened. Okay. Um, this is what happens. As the rats swarm across you. Oh, they can actually, so never mind. Killian, you're not safe. They can move through creatures' spaces if they weren't there. Um, you are swarmed by rats, Killian. Sorry about that. Uh, Tithla does a... Yo. Uh, does a nine hit you? No. No. What about a natural 20 for a total of 22? Uh, easily. 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 That is going to be to eight try. points I of piercing just... damage. Tithla, as the rats begin swarming okay. over you, they run up underneath your 20. dress, underneath your um, bandolier, pushing past, nipping onto your hands, biting where you are holding onto your bow. As you reach back to try and swat them off, the furry forms tiny and almost weightless by themselves but as a swarm they rush atop you and begin to drag you down to the floor these tiny mouths sharp teeth gnawing biting as they cut through your flesh flesh i get to say flesh again um as they begin biting through you it's death by a thousand bites um not yet that'll come later um oh okay theo does a 14 hit you uh, yeah, unfortunately it does. Awesome. And Killian, does a 21 hit you? Uh, hang on a minute. Do watch, I have something? Watch, a, to watch a TPK from rats. <laughs> well, it's not the whole party because we're so Sorry, that's up, true. So, watch, yeah. a, watch a, P, yeah. a PPK, a partial party kill. <laughs> nice. Partial party kill. I will, um, because I, I will, as part of it, summon my shield, which then sort of extends slightly and cast shield as well. Nice as a reaction. Very, very nice. Your shield cast shield. 
Uh, 23 is enough to pass. Um, Theo, you will take seven points of piercing damage as the rats rush up underneath your clothes. Two of them begin gnawing at the uh, owlbear skin cloak you wear around your shoulders, the others biting into your neck and soft parts of your body. Oh, hell no. Uh, oh, did, yeah. you change, did you change from speak with animals to um, murder to, uh, to, to moonbeam very quickly? <laughs> just in this, just here. in this moment, uh, Killian, it is your go next. For some reason, I came into this castle injured. That's probably not a good thing. I came in with no spell slots left. Did you really? I've used two of my spell in Yes, not because we were meant to have one more night. I think you lost the spell slots in the. Blinsky special? No, didn't I don't think he did. <laughs> I kept track no. of that. Diseased the, rats. Um, oh, let me have a yeah, quick check. Is that, what, is that what you would like as your um, summon brune? <laughs> oh, no. As, we um, haven't slept. Yeah, we, we, we haven't slept since we... We, yeah, we literally came from... We Argenbos had the whole Argenbos hold, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure we went into that down on spells and damage. We had a whole eight hour ride to, yeah. the, to the place. Jonah will spend the whole time sleeping. Yeah. It was the day. We didn't get to sleep. Jonah will spend the time sleeping. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean it was time to sleep. <laughs> nap, nap King had a big old nap. I have a counter offer for you, Owen. Hello. Obviously, obviously the food that's, the food and drink that Strahd has provided us has um, sort of invigorated and upgraded us from 2014 rules to 2024 rules because it will also give us a long rest <laughs> there's a whole decade of time in there to have rested yeah. uh, <laughs> so good uh, not a, it's rats boys why are you freaking out not a long rest it's just rats guys come on <laughs> you've not had a chance for a long rest a long good. Um, i would i would allow the the dinner uh, or at least the partial dinner you've completed and the carriage ride to at least count for a short rest if you haven't already I taken I already took the short rest, Alan. That doesn't help me. Okay. I mean, it helps me because I was missing hit points. <laughs> <laughs> and I get, no, I don't even get my Warlock spells back because I've still got them. All right, right. So they in their face or what's going on? They're all over you, Tiffler. They're literally climbing up your body. Uh, Killian. Ow. Time to Time to unleash. Yes, I shall unleash. Uh, I gain 11 hit points back, so I'm all right. Hey, Almost that's, at full. That's not nothing. I'm pretty sure I'm about to do more damage to the whole party in the rats bill, so go for it. As oh god, thanks. As, as the um armor of Agathus and uh, armor of Agathus, as the shield begins to dissipate from my shield, the magic from it sort of fractures into little dust particles, and then those dust particles sort of attract to my armor and form a radiant frosty type armor around me as i will cast armor of agathus at level three very nice uh that's my bonus action oh i thought that was an action okay so my action is going to be uh to i don't like doing this that often uh, i know i can't actually because um they are I've already summoned my shield. I've already used my bonus action. So I will try attempt to Eldritch Blast the ones in front of me. It'll be with disadvantage because it's ranged attack and they're right in my face. But... It will indeed. How do you do it? There we go. Like so this would be... It almost makes sense. You, uh, in this moment, as the rats begin rushing up your body, Killian, you panic cast shield, immediately follow up with armor of Agathus to try and freeze the rats that are already on you, freeze them off you and then start just blasting randomly, just throwing all of your spells around. Uh, 14. 14 is enough to hit a swarm of rats. Uh, would you like to do some damage for me? I shall indeed, as I summon the Radiant Pistol. Oh, you now. That's six, uh, points, six of points of force damage, and then yeah. I'll do the second attack. As you blast the rats. One eight. Uh, what was that? Sorry. Yep, that's going to be a natural one. The blast goes yep. wide, and in the cramped conditions within this corridor, I'm going to need you to roll me a d100. Uh, if you're out in the open, it's not so bad with ranged attacks going wild, but in cramped conditions like these, I need to see how bad this natural one is. That's a seven. That's a seven. Okay. <laughs> you're going to hit yourself. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Um, not not with the Eldritch Blast, but as you just blast up, trying to get one of the rats off your face, you Eldritch Blast up underneath, and a section of the, um, or maybe not on your face, but as you try to blast one off your shoulder, the blast smashes into the wall next to you, and a piece of masonry tumbles and crashes on top of you. You're going to take 
two we... points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Fucking nothing. The wall, the, wall, the wall will take 15 points of, or whatever it was, the, the piece of masonry that hit me will take 15 points of cold damage. Oh yeah, shit. Because <laughs> back at this, <laughs> you watch as the section of masonry smacks you in the face and then immediately just piss into powdery snow as it is just evaporated by the uh by the blast of armor of agathus nice very nice uh anything else yeah, on your turn kill you on me. Yeah. that's it, it. all righty theo is your go next um i thought moonbeam had a bigger bigger radius but i think i'm just gonna yeah, the moonbeam down on the rat in front of me i will make a constitution save the new rules of moonbeam it gets applied immediately Let's yeah, do nice. the concept. Oh, rats have a nine constitution. This is going to be good. Oh, shit. What's the DC? Is it 16? Uh, yes. 16 is what I rolled. <laughs> well, I rolled 17, but minus one is 16. Uh, it's only going to be half damage, but this is still going to be bad for the rats. So they take half damage. So five then. And, zoom. and I'm on guessing the, you're targeting... Direction. Yeah, cool. Boom. As the magic that you summon this portal to the fey wilds opening the light of the silvery moons above the fey boah, straight down to the rats you watch as two of them just get immediately evaporated by the moon Alrighty. um and then do i look i honestly don't think this is cause enough to wild checks i'll be i'll um i'll just leave it there for this turn actually Sweet. Well, can I, I, I can't move it the turn I summon it as a bonus action, can I? I don't believe so, no. I think as... Well, does it, actually, let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. Let's do... Let's do... Um, let's do a quick rules check for uh, the new moonbeam. I don't I don't think so, but if it doesn't explicitly say... A creature look. makes this save only once. Um, on later turns. On later turns. Yeah. yeah. You can take a magic action on later turns to move the cylinder up to 60 feet. Yeah. Oh, it's no longer a bonus action, it's now an action to move it. Oh, was it always an action? Okay. I think it might have always been an action, actually, now that I say that out loud. Yeah. No, it can't be. No, it is. It was always an action to move it, Um, I think. All right. Anything else in your turn, Theo? Uh, yeah, no. Theo chills. Tithla, you're covered in rats. What are you going to do? Um, we'll just, I don't want to get out of the rules question section too quickly, so oh, we'll, okay. we'll stay in there for well, a I'm second. pleased I've got an Oreo uh, to entertain myself while you ask this question. <laughs> Good weapon mastery mm -hmm. for Nick. Uh, it says when you make the extra attack of the light property, you can make it as a part of the attack action instead of as a bonus action. You can make this extra attack only once per turn. Great. With the light property, you have to use a different weapon. So yeah. which one of those is the dagger that has Nick on it? The, it's going to be the dagger. Which one of those attacks is the dagger? Is it'll be made the second. The it'll, it'll, it, because... I think it sounds like the second attack rather than the initial attack because the initial attack is what, is what you're then triggering for the the nick and it would use the... Yeah, so it'd be it'd be the dagger. The, the second dagger, I should say. Are you dual well, wielding, are you? Yeah. Well, I've got one hand axe and one dagger. Yeah, so you do... If you've got two attacks, you yeah. do two attacks with your hand axe and then normally you'd use your bonus action for the dagger, but you yep. put that into that your attack instead. In. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, great. And we're just going to do that. We're just going to roll a lot there. Um, uh, no, nah, we're not going to do that. We're just going to attack with the dagger twice and then the hand axe once. Done. <laughs> I and love so how the hand quickly. Axe is the bonus. I love how quickly Jacob changed his mind on that instantaneously. Yeah, because I have a plus seven on the dagger and a plus two on the hand axe. Yeah, it's easy to see why you seven on the dagger the wouldn't wouldn't apply. Yeah. So. Great. The first one, that's a tender hit on the first dagger. Uh, just enough. That is the DC. Love it. That's or the AC, a I should say. 30 20 to hit on the second dagger. D unfortunately, that doesn't hit for some reason. The 10 does, that but misses. the 10 does not hit. <laughs> uh, and then the hand, uh, uh, we'll, we'll do the damage. I need to have Oreos first. with me as a snack for every session. Ooh. This is this is reinvigorating Ooh, me. That's, eight and that's eight. 16. And are you targeting the rats? Uh, directly to the north or directly to the west of you? You currently have two swarms of rats. The ones that are more on me. The ones to the north. So that's up to you. Yeah, ones to the north. That's 16 damage. Tithler, 
you just grab your dagger and just start stabbing at the rats that are crawling across your body. Before too long, your dagger is no longer effective. Not because you've blunted it, not because you've chipped it, but because there's about eight rats pierced across the blade that you then have to like swing your arm to shake off before you go back to stabbing rats again. Tisla has her hand axe in the other hand, scrapes it along the blade of the dagger to like push the rat corpses off of the dagger and continue slicing. Yeah, fantastic. You're slicing and dicing, um, chopping that meat as you just start stabbing into the rats constantly. It's always good to get a, a fallout <laughs> reference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I could, if I could squeeze in a, a really fun reference like that, I will. <laughs> Adi, ja, get it slash. Uh, <laughs> Why not? Such a bomb. It's such a good set. Uh, and then Tithel will use her hand axe to attack. That's an eleven. To That's going to hit. That, that and it's great. Hits. I do get to apply my modifier to the damage. To yes, this you do. Because it's a negative. So it's four, not five. <laughs> Done. <laughs> As you stab into the rats again, Tithla, there's literally like two rats left from this initial swarm that are still on you and you watch as one of them sort of looking at the bloody mess that you've made of the rest of its swarm. You watch as just lets go and falls off you slowly. <laughs> it's like grins eyes wide at it and baring her teeth at it starting to pick up some of grinner's traits i love it it's a rat we can we eat rats rats are a good snack rats are, rats are, rats great are noble creatures and they're well respected across both Faerun and nostail yes it is, it is a dwarven and goblin delicacy rat on a stick mm-hmm. 100 it's a nice stick yeah oh yeah maple it's it's commensurate with the yeah. level of respect we have maple, for maple smoked rat <laughs> mm-hmm. can't get much better <laughs> than that joke about this sort of thing come on um, back at the top of the round the swarms of rats are going to um hack and slash and chop that meat um yeah. killian one of them's gonna make another save oh yeah true i'll do that at the very beginning of the turn hey let's do that first uh let's do another con save that is a four uh, Thea, would you uh, like to... It's 10 damage, correct? Or do you want to roll it again? Uh, I'm happy if you roll it again. I reckon we roll it again. I'm happy if you roll it again. It, we should be rolling it each round, so yeah, roll it again. 16! <laughs> Big improvement! Theo, you're not... You, these rats, they're touching you. That's not okay. The little tiny little hands grabbing onto you, the little teeth digging into you. As you, has everyone got Pokemon on their lap except for me? I feel like... Well, Jacob's isn't a no, Pokemon, mine's, so... Mine's an Ewok. Um, that's the Pokemon of Star Wars. Yeah. That's true. That I should have like a pal Star from Wars. Pal Worlds. Uh, then I can get sued by Nintendo. I do have a tiny Lego <laughs> Strad. I do have a tiny Lego Strad. Does that count? There we go. No. That's frightening. Okay. Yeah, no, it's... Um, as, uh, <laughs> as you just strengthen the magic in that moment, Theo, as you pulse the magic through the moonbeam, you watch as this blast of radiant energy shines down from the ceiling and melts about nine of the 12 rats. You just watch as they are just melted, turned into a pile of goo in front of you. Rat um, slag. Rat slag, exactly. Uh, <laughs> the one remaining rat from that swarm uh, tries to bite you, Theo. Uh, Killian, you're going to get a bite, and Tithla, you're going to get uh, a bite as well. Actually, Tithla, could I'm you please roll me a d4, oh. please? Actually, sorry, d6, d6. Could you roll me d6? Um, uh, happy to. I will say Tithla was vaguely provoking them with yep. her bearing her teeth at them. That's that okay, because the six is you, so it's all Perfect. good. Um, Tithla, uh, 11 and 14. Uh, they, neither of them hit. Stupid Killian, rats. 18. That is my AC. 18 does hit then, unless you're going to shield. Quick, nope. use all these spell slots on rats, mate. Come on. <laughs> Come on, nope, you coward. I'm not uh, and Theo, I'm guessing a dirty 20 does hit you. Um, no? No. <laughs> well, I'm looking Under at your character noodles. sheet and it says <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so. says Moonbeam says no. Tithla, it's just as it's just as well, Tithla, that you that both these attacks missed you because when the rats have uh, less than half their HP, they deal extra damage. Theo, your Moonbeam has not helped you in this instance right uh, here. How, did, how is that possible? How, how does less rats do more? Uh, I, and I quote: um, 
Oh no, sorry. Apologies, it's not additional. It is half damage. I've, I read that for a moment as like additional damage. It's like maybe they get like enraged, but it is it is actually half damage. It's only 1d6. That's okay, Thea. I was already prepared for that. Okay. Uh, you are going to take four points of piercing damage. Killian, you are going to take uh, eight points of piercing damage. Chisley, you take nothing because nothing hits you. Should the rat please great. take eight points, uh, 15 points of cold damage, please? Uh, you okay. watch as uh, nine of the rats in the swarm in front of you uh, Killian freeze to death instantaneously as they try to bite you uh, and it is your turn there is one solitary rat left of that swarm right in front of you squeaking as its leg is frozen to the floor as it tries to pull itself free uh, the shield sort of I put my hand to the, to the back of the shield and I lift out of the top and I pull out a sword sort of like elven style sword and I'm just gonna stamp down on it I use my packed weapon to summon a sword. Skewer. Who else can Skewer. feel a natural one incoming? I feel like it's coming. Yeah, I can feel two, it in my bones. I've already, done, I've already had it once. Oh, that was a, that's 11. Killian? That's two of um, them. Roll me some damage. <laughs> nice try, Jake. <laughs> it's 12 points. That's max damage on this poor one rat. Killian, how do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? I. Just, just, one of the other swarms. <laughs> um, the rats don't seem phased by the the sudden appearance of a dead rat flying towards them, but you do successfully take out the swarm of rats that's right in front of you, or the swarm of rat, I guess, that's left in front of you <laughs> as you wipe out the last one. Uh, anything else on your turn, Killian? No, I only get one attack when I when I attack that way. So I that's it. Theo. I would like to move my moonbeam up to to here. I have them make the save. That is a seven. Would you like to roll uh, me some damage? Beat the 16. <laughs> roll me some damage, please. 10! Oh, you watch as six of the rats are immediately vaporized oh, oh, oh. by the moonbeam as it just drops on top of them. Um, Anything else on your turn, Theo? Um, how many rats are in the swarm still in front of me? Uh, the one right in front of you, there's one rat. Would you accept stomping on him as a bonus action? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Unless you have the ability uh, to do unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Not really. <laughs> Sorry. I have vertical leaps. Can I vertically leap on him? As in, you're going to jump up in the air in a corridor that's only got a roof height of about eight feet, and then you're going to land back on it with enough force to take it out. I'm I'm going to allow it, but do understand that based on that description, there's there's potentially some side effects for you here. Sweet, yeah. John Cena. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, what do you um? Is that an uh, unarmed un strike, please? This can only be good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three! <laughs> it's exactly lethal. <laughs> <laughs> to you. As you jump up and slam your... <laughs> no. As you... <laughs> I rolled damage accidentally there. Oh, uh, that's yeah, true. You probably should roll to hit first. <laughs> I oh. just, I just assumed that you were gonna hit. That's a bad call, isn't it? I, actually, why, why, why is there no button to roll to hit just as the damage? Why are you doing this thing? Just roll a d twenty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll know. It's a, you just gotta get above a ten, mate. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Even if you got a minus five, you'll still hit. Um, Theo, as you launch yourself into the air, you you forget about how low the roof is, and as you slam your head into the roof, you also take three bludgeoning damage. And it's less that you land on the rat stomping it; it's more that you smash your head in, get a minor concussion, and fall on the rat, crushing it underneath your body in that moment. As you oh, hear a, a very final, very uh, pained squeak from underneath you, this is that. Do I have to roll for concentration on that? <laughs> you do. <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't think. I don't think that's. We don't need to do that. That's fine. Sweet. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, Tithla. Unless there's anything else on your go, Theo. No, that's everything. Tithla, it is your go. Tithla's going to go for the uh, stab, stab, slash again. It's a classic. It's simple. It's effective. It works. Exactly. First dagger. That's twenty-one to hit. 
Second dagger. Just misses. All 19 There's less hit. rats to hit, so the hut no, definitely both hit. That's five damage and then eight damage, so thirteen damage on that first lot. They're and you're still... targeting the rats that are crawling all over you right in front of you. Hundred percent. Tithly, you kill all the rats. Sorry, let me rephrase. You kill all the rat. <laughs> the one rat that's left. Does that first hit then do that? Yeah. Then the, second the first hit, the five attack. hits, absolutely. And then you can target the next ones after that. The rats that Perfect. are so then swimming that across goes you. Under that second one. Tithla. And then. <laughs> oh, no, go. <laughs> yep, go. Well, Tithla was then just going to swing with a hand axe as well. Fantastic. Let's see it. Love I was going to so. describe, but I might wait a second because I think I might be describing something unnecessary. <laughs> Is that a six? Is that a six to hit? Uh-huh. Uh, Titha, I, I will go back to my first description. As you stab oh, the one rat that's left on you, you turn around and go, ah! and begin stabbing the rats right in front of you. Um, you do manage to hit one of the rats. And then at that point, as you slam your hand axe forward, you realize the moonbeam is still on them. And as you put your hand into the moonbeam, you feel the sudden tss as your skin burns and you have to pull your hand back out, which is why you missed with the hand axe. All too familiar sensation. Not, yeah, not again. <laughs> the swarm of rats. Happy days? Uh, there's about four rats left in this swarm and they are going to oh well I need to make a con save first right because they're in the moonbeam yep hang on you're evaporated uh, roll me some damage please that is a 12 that'll do moonbeam this is this I think this might be it that's 11. <laughs> you yeah. watch as one rat is left alive as the sun. Blah, as you leave them with three hit points once again. It's amazing you guys are so set on leaving them with only three hit points. It's very impressive. Uh, uh, let it go. Let it go. It'll send a message back to the room. <laughs> Tell them what you've seen. <laughs> as the last rat uh, goes to bite, uh, let's say Theo. That's a four. Guessing that doesn't hit. The final rat um, goes to bite you, Theo. He's unable to, um, but does move up closer to you to try and take you out. Uh, Killian, just just Eldritch Blast. Let's get this over and done with. I'm going to Eldritch Blast. I, I should say that I did take the Eldritch Invocation that does give me two attacks, so I do get two attacks with my physical, with my melee attacks. But I shall summon the Radiant Pistol and fire two shots. <laughs> And probably you're not gonna, both of them. You're not going to need to. As long as you hit on the first one, you'll be sweet. 17 hits. 17. Uh, the minimum damage you can do is more than three. You don't. I mean, you can roll if you want. Six. <laughs> Double. Oh, six. Yeah. Uh, lucky. How do you want to do this? And as it goes to bite Theo, uh, just, just before he even gets there to miss, I just it just evaporates into mist in front of him. As There's a, a sudden wet condensation of a red mist upon your face, Theo, as behind you you feel a hand on your shoulder as Killian evaporates the rat using your shoulder to steady his aim. And with that, we are out of initiative as the rats are all vaporized. It's in this moment... You guys are war. <laughs> it's in this moment you realize you've made quite a bit of noise in this corridor. I was considering using Erupting Earth, which would have been a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> That could have been worse. Uh, but yeah, this sudden moment of quiet. You realize you've been very loud. Very loud. The screams of pained rats squealing. Yeah, as, as you've been letting off Eldritch Blasts. Blah, blah. Tithla's being on. Ah! <laughs> Stabbing away. I uh, know. Tithla, Tithla went into a zen state that was dead silence as oh, okay. she was executing these rats. Theo He's leaping the into the ceiling and then collapsing on the floor with a dull thud. I can't talk well, that out of that one, sorry. Eldridge Blast has a vocal and somatic component. So there if would I go, be noise. Eldridge, yeah. If I go, Eldridge Blast, does it <laughs> make the spell quiet? Why the uh, accent? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna rule I'm gonna rule in this moment that Eldritch Blast with verbal and somatic components is one of those spells that it's very hard to do quietly especially when you don't preface beforehand I do this stealthily <laughs> I understand it's like the Kamehameha Kamehameha Eldritch Blast as you unleash it yeah 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to do that from now on, though. Yeah. What? What? Like, do it with a fun anime accent with think... Elgurich Blasteru, or announce the name quietly? Because please, <laughs> actually, really, ironically, be an anime character now. I do. I do I think we need to redraw. We need to read your Killian yeah. doing the coming <laughs> with Eldritch Blast. That'd be pretty sick. Maybe that's what I'll do for you. I'll just draw you as Goku. Eldritch Blast. That's it. We do the whole spirit bomb sequence for 10 turns with your hands above your head before you do anything. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be pretty funny, actually. Every one of the spell you want to cast, you have to spend a turn, turn charging it up. <laughs> One turn. It's got to be at least ten, ten turns. Two two episodes minimum. <laughs> I'll just stand there charging. For, <laughs> I got to connect with all the life force of Earth. It's gonna take me about three days of real world time. <laughs> Yikes! About yeah. twenty episodes in the anime. In this moment, as the it's silence is deafening, you realize that you have also been quite deafening. <laughs> How loud you have been in these moments. So we all agree. We if anyone mentions the noise, we just blame it on Grinnell. Um, sure, but I I don't know why we would say that he wasn't here. He didn't do it. That's what exactly. I'm saying. He needs to be here in order for it to count as. He's off doing something. Who knows what? Uh, and Tithla, this is one of those times when it's. Remember when we talked about the white lies? That are okay to tell if. Is it for everyone's benefit? No, I don't remember that. I've tried to how many I've tried to teach you this lesson several times. Sometimes it is okay to lie or lie by omission. If it is say helping us and working against uh vampires. Um Nah, I don't I don't think it is. Just don't contradict me if I tell someone something and you think it's a lie, and that's that's all you need to do. I, I would never contradict you. I would just ask if that's really you, what you happened. You literally contradicted by saying I'd never contradict you after he asked you to. <laughs> this, I just I just do che double check if this is one of those times where <laughs> white lies are okay. So no, this is one of those times where you you have to check that after we've left the people that we're talking to and. When we're safely just alone, then you can ask if it's one of those times. I don't understand how we would then be able to correct ourselves for them because clearly we wouldn't be intentionally you, deceiving them. You just have to trust me that I know when it's okay to be a little bit deceptive and when it's not okay to be a little bit deceptive. Should we be having this conversation no, on the move while yeah, trying we, to find uh, the skull? 100%. Let's, let's go. Um, I'll, I'll send Froggy off to somewhere to scout. Um... Is, is this room, does this room just end here? Did we just go up to rat room and then- No, 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 the, dead end? right in front of you are these very, very ornate doors. Um, I'll describe them again, just so I can get you back in the um, back in the zone. Um, but uh, the doorway in front of you that stands out um, at the end of this corridor, the two alcoves on either side, you can see it is made of steel and it has been beautifully, painstakingly engraved with these intricate details showing various depictions of swirling patterns, very stylized, um, but very beautiful. And the doors themselves, now that you're taking a bit of a time to look at them and focusing on them, you can see that they almost seem to, they seem to be reflecting more light than they should. Not a glow per se, but the light from the lantern behind you that's set into the wall sconce it's illuminating them and, and it's reflecting a lot more light than it should. But just a steel door or an iron door. I could throw the froggy scout grenade through the door and we can see what's up. Sounds like our best option to see what's in there. Right. Uh, does the door open if I try to open it? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so you, so you try the handle. Open it and crack, yeah. Yeet the frog, and away we go. As you look through the frog's eyes, Theo, the room is dark. The candles in here are unlit, and everything is covered in a layer of dust and cobwebs. Frogs can still see. We've discussed this last session. Um, as you throw, we, we went over this. As you fling the frog, frogs are partly nocturnal. A lot of species are. As you hurl the frog grenade into the room, begin looking through its eyes, you close your eyes and focus through the frog grenade. Um, the frog sails through the air and lands on a long dining table. 
Um, as you look through the frog's eyes, this table appears enormous to the uh, the frog's very diminutive form. But even even in your satyr form, as you kind of judge the differences and the distances, you know that this is a very very long, a very large oak table. But everything on it is covered in dust. It takes you a moment to pick out the details: fine china, silverware, goblets, carafes, serving platter in the very middle. This was laid for a feast a long time ago. As you begin to take note of other items in the room, you can see a sideboard just off the main wall, a layered tiered cake still standing on it, but covered in dust and cobwebs. It should have rotted away ages ago. There should be nothing left, but the cake seems almost untouched by time but not spared the ravages of dust that have lain across it. The once pure white frosting, now this dull gray. As you look around the roof, you can see cobwebs hanging from the rafters and beams above. On top of the cake. It's hard to make out from this perspective, but you can only see one figure. And behind, a shadowed portrait covered in cobwebs, hidden in the gloom of the room. I relay that to the team. Look, this doesn't seem to be anything bad. It is a dining room with a cake. Tithler, do not eat the cake. Um, I think you'll remember that when we had the pies, I was the only one that didn't eat it. So I think I will tell you do not eat the cake. I right, will eat the cake. Okay, go team. No cake for anyone. Right. What What if it's like a strawberry cake though? Somebody did not eat it. It's covered in dust and spiders. And it's probably haunted. Oh, no, not the haunted. We already dealt with the haunted house. I thought we got out of that. Look, we're back in. Um, no. Yeah, and that Theo just o- o- opens the door, steps inside. As um, you move inside. Maybe yeah. launches a, a, um, a starry wisp cantrip if it's particularly dark and then just, like, sticks it to the roof. Yeah, absolutely. As you... As you blast the starry wisp up into the ceiling you can see a large cast iron chandelier hanging from a chain that leads up into the wooden rafters the candles that were once here have burned away to stubs long ago the starry wisp as it strikes the edge of the um edge of the iron hangs there for a moment and you see the light cast these shadows across the room the room is ancient theo You can see that the stuff in here has been left to age and rot for who knows how long. A very, very long time. With a closer look inside the room, you can see that the figure on top of the cake is a woman. Hard to make out many details, but dressed in what looks like a black laced um, dress, a veil covering the face. And from this perspective as well, that your frog couldn't quite see, as you move into the room, you can see a window towards the south, in front of which a dusty lute and a a very tall, beautifully made harp stand shrouded, covered in cobwebs. Does the statue look kind of Irina slash... It's tiny. It's it's like a tiny wedding cake doll, so it's hard to make out any details. But as you have a bit of a closer look... You can see the portrait behind. The as you have a bit of a look, you can see that the figure in the portrait behind does bear a resemblance to a raven-haired woman dressed in adventuring clothes and holding at her side, her hand resting on the pommel of a blade that does not look unfamiliar to you. And as you reach up and begin wiping away, well, let me let me ask, do you wipe away the dust to have a bit of a closer look? Or yeah, as you begin wiping away the dust. It's uncanny. You're gazing upon the visage of Arena. It looks almost exactly like her. Although a touch older, you can see one or two gray hairs have been captured by this portrait. The lines on her face, laughter lines, much more obvious around her eyes and around her mouth. But it looks so much like her. What shape's this loot in? 
Perfectly preserved, but slightly dusty. Perfectly preserved, Theo. Uncannily so. Ooh, in the backpack. Um, do you do you have proficiency with a loot? Say to you, I can do anything I want. I do. <laughs> Twenty four rules. I do. It's gonna say. Do you want to? I reckon I could. Got a plus six in in I do I have anything in performance? <laughs> He's so he came in so covered. I have a plus six. Wait, do I have anything in performance? Um, I'm, even a, would you like me to show you how that's done? I you know, plus six in performance. I got this going. She's all good. I could also show you if you'd like. I'm, I'm at the minute. I'm currently. I've got a piece of uh, like jerky or ration in my hand, and I've been as we've been walking around the room. I've been sort of circling my hand around it, and it's sort of filled up with uh, light energy. And I take that and I eat it. I'm going to use a new feature that I get as a warlock Ooh. in the 2024 rules, which is called magical cunning. Yes. I spend a minute to do a ritual uh, or a esoteric right for one minute and then I get to regain one of my expended pack magic spell slots very really nice well, if, if you want to accompany my song horn on the loot I'll, I'll throw the loot to you then there is also the harp Killing, uh, if you want to have a close look at the harp there is also a large harp a bit, bit less easy to transport yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Notable, they're famously hard to steal yeah I, I mean I, thank you for the for the loot and I'll sort of give it a, a strum to see if it's in tune Killian. Maybe don't stop it here. Killian. As an, as as an, as an, as an, Killian, as you give it a strum, uh, <laughs> can I get you to make me a wisdom saving throw, please? I can oh, indeed. No. Also, we've been plenty loud enough. Nah, now this is what did it. Oh, this is what no. did it over the edge. Was oh, the single no, strum of a loot. That's, that's a six. If I've got anything six. I can do to, to help that... Did we um, all get inspiration in the last session? It's okay. I I, yes. I did not. Yes. I, yes. I did not roll very well on the damage that you're about to take. <laughs> oh, you can see oh, that one. No. Oh, why did that one show up and the others don't? Whatever. Um, it's I, only I, two I, damage. I'd like to use my inspiration if that's okay. Would you like to use your inspiration? I would very much. <laughs> It's just two I, damage. I, I just the two again. Fucking take the two damage. There you go. You're taking the two damage. <laughs> as you as you strum this this beautiful lute, um, the notes that it plays are golden and beautiful. Joan, uh, not Joan. You're not there. Uh, Tithla and Theo. The sound Yo. that you hear is melodious, and subtle. Ah, melodious. Killian. In your mind, you feel a screaming horror as the notes that you play create this discordant screeching noise that echoes within the hollow of your skull, you take two points of psychic damage. Oh, definitely going to take this with me. I, I think I'm a bit out of practice. It's been a little while since I've played these sort of tunes. Ow, get, that, I, get, I, I, I apologize for that. Practice if you think this is an appropriate audience for strumming a lute, we are infiltrating. I'm going to point to hey, the dead. Are we rats not meant outside. to be here? Yeah, you sure. We were meant to be here. You, so that, that's a more, why would we make more noise than Titler? We are, of course, meant to be here. I'm, insofar as we have a reason for being here. Oh, okay. I'd very much like to point to the incident that happened not two, three minutes ago where Tiffler was going. And you decided to summon a big boom down on the rats. Oh, I was defending you. Was so silent, Mister Mister Sir. My pew pew was silent. I went Eldritch Blast. No, and we we know that it, it has verbal up. components. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you did not go Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. What's <laughs> called Eldritch little pop? It's just... Eldritch Blast. Moons are notably silent. But... I'm pretty sure Moonbeam has verbal and somatic components too, Theo. Nice try. <laughs> No, we're not. no, we've discussed this. You know what That's doesn't have a verbal component? Stabbing a fools. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> not for the user anyway. Dagger! <laughs> well, hang on. If we're doing anime shit, you do need to announce your attacks. Frenzied stab! <laughs> yeah. Um, 
as oh. as you strum the lute, Killian, and receive this damage, you get the distinct impression this might be a magical instrument. Um, with that, we're going to jump back huh. to Jonor. Oh, Jonor, as you gaze upon the crystal ball sitting in the brass or copper, uh, hard to say, um, uh, holder, the, the clawed legs holding it aloft, you see the smoke billowing inside, swirling into a multitude of patterns and shapes that draw your eye inwards. And as you gaze into its depths, you feel a pull towards it. Subtle, but distinct. Consciously noticing this. So, is it like the pull, the draw of that possessed book from Sergei? So I've been down that pathway twice before. And yeah. I was going to see if I intuit what it no, is. No, it feels nothing like that. Jonah, this, it's almost as if in this moment, you can see a silhouette of yourself five seconds in the future, walking towards the orb and picking it up. There is this distinct understanding that your future and this crystal ball are tied together like it was with the cards when you first picked them up. Ooh. Is he going to fight that? Do you want to, do you want to make I a spell casting check to, to kind of like vibe it out a little bit, get a bit of an understanding of what's happening here or so do you want to quickly, do you want to quickly pull a card just to well, see? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I will go a spell attack and see i haven't looked at what the roll is yet 21. uh i'm gonna go highs and lows so okay. oh okay high was i do the thing he should do which is display curiosity about it first um so i what katarina have you looked into this before oh a, a couple of times I've, I've tried to to gaze into it to see the future but um I haven't really seen anything, just uh, occasional wispy, wispy smoke, not much else. Uh, you, you didn't see, you didn't see me in there. Or, or you? Oh, I'm flattered, Jonah, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm married to Strad now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> don't be silly. That's, I wasn't feeling us. It was more just a, yeah, don't, don't worry. That's not what I meant. Well, I, I, I know I was I was kidding, but it is funny to see you so flustered. Uh, no, I, I haven't I haven't been able to to draw upon the magic of the crystal ball and and see um, any real future. Uh, but I'm not trained in divination magic. I imagine that has some part to play in it. Surely. You you have shared you you know you have a mild curiosity of spells and I mean this room is like a treasure trove. It it, it literally is a treasure trove and. As someone that is very fond of uh, divination, I'd, I'd like to just show you how to do a, a basic uh, divination like spell of identify to sort of learn about it more. Like I'm very intrigued about this. So um, at this point, I pull out my spell book, and as a ritual casting, I'm going to be showing her the spell, like the written hieroglyphics and symbols of uh, that, and also. I'm just pulling out the spell book freely. She can probably see all the other first level spells that are written there as well. This is just a, a teaching moment. And I propose yeah. to her to, do you want to, to run through the casting of this spell? We, we can do this one together. You could probably learn it yourself and learn other things as well. And how, how long would you spend teaching her this? Just so that I have an idea of time as it moves around. It is a 10 minute, 10 minute cast. Okay. Yeah. It's a one minute cast normally and plus 10 for ritual. Yeah. As you, <coughs> excuse me, so just, <laughs> um, as you take these moments, this 10 minutes to, to go through and teach, identify, you watch as Katarina nods along, following most of what you're saying, occasionally asking questions about some of the more, I'd say like fundamental aspects of the arcane language. She's not someone who's been trained in arcane runes formally yet. She's she's clearly picked up some knowledge though, Jonor. As you, as you go through this stuff with her, some of the things that you would expect a, a basic student of magic to know, she doesn't know, but she does know some things that a more advanced student might not even be aware of yet. It's almost like she's 
taught herself from books that she doesn't know which order to go through <laughs> so like some of the things sure. she's yeah it's like her, her attention and focus on this is actually quite um it's not being guided in, in the way that you're offering to do in this moment and as you go through and, and assist her with this you watch as by the end of those 10 minutes the magic glows around her for a moment and she casts identify oh wonderful i am um... Basically, I was hoping both of us could do it, so we both get a read of what this... To discover this object together was the intent. Probably both cast. As you focus the magic and release it, the crystal ball in front of you lights up, glowing with magic, Jonor. And as you focus your attention mm. on it, you can sense much power hidden here. This crystal ball allows you to cast the spell Scrying. In addition, you can also cast Detect Thoughts as well. And not just creatures that you can see within range, but creatures that you target with the Scrying spell. This is a crystal ball of mind reading. Wild. I will send you the Wild. link. This is one of the new magic items from the 2024 handbook. It is a very nice spell. That is sick. That's very good. Um, so there's one key part of the spell description for identify. Um, you learn whether any ongoing spells are affecting this item and what they are. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, that is an important I'm thing. I'm not sure if I need should... to elaborate why I asked that. <laughs> no, 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 that, that checks out. Um, yeah, uh, there is uh, a spell currently affecting this. Um, there is a glyph of warding currently cast on this object. You're not sure exactly what the trigger would be, but generally with glyphs of warding, touching them is normally enough to set them off and they can deal damage or have other effects as well. But it looks like it looks like protection has been placed upon this to prevent someone just running away with it. You know it. how we spoke about verbal somatics yeah, on yeah. spells? Yeah. Um identify has a uh, has a <laughs> semantic sorry a, um, a touch component as well. Oh, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Jonor, as you touch the crystal ball to activate, it's in this moment you realised you fucked up. <laughs> as the identify spell goes off, you realise all of this, the knowledge bursting into your mind like a flower after spring rains in that sudden moment. And it's at that moment you realise the glyph of warding that it activates. Could you roll me a d10? Yeah, absolutely. I can do that for you. That's. Um, he seems so excited to there. roll that d10 for me. Um, I'm intrigued, that's for sure. Four. That's a four. Okay, let's have a quick look at what P has been. PPK? <laughs> a single, <laughs> a, J a JPK, a Jonor, a Jonor party kill. It's just Jonor JPK. party right now. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Jonor. Nothing seems to happen. You watch as the glyph activates, the rune glows, and you brace yourself, preparing for some sort of impact. And then, nothing. Oh, it's even worse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Please explode, journal. Please go to explode, journal. <laughs> He watches a small bean floats up in the air <laughs> into your mouth. <laughs> like a little goldfish, you're like, oh. <laughs> as you catch it. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, Jonah, nothing seems to happen Look, immediately. I, been, I was leading the teaching and Harrison's face was just <laughs> face palm there. <laughs> oh, um, it's I'd pretty good. Teaching, so I'd touch, I'd like complete the spell, touch first, she wouldn't touch afterwards. Um, so I learned that Cliff of Warding was there, but that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, at that point, seems legit. I mean, <laughs> the thing I've been, <laughs> the thing I've has been attached to me now, watch the journal, that's already done, but the thing is still good, so. 
<laughs> um, I, go, I grab the, well, hang I, grab the, the <laughs> I don't know. How, how have you reached this decision? <laughs> Look, you're so right. It's all, it's all good. It's all good, man. Nothing. <laughs> you didn't explode in a fireball. It must be fine. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to pick it up? Add it to your inventory? No, that would spark intrigue, definitely. Being um, having something roll good. over me. Yeah. Um. Okay. What is that? So, it's any sensation? Just no spell cast. Do I feel you watch no, as the glyph it. activates, releases its magic, but nothing else that you can see happens. The worst has already happened. Okay. Hmm. I was a little bit curious. Do you see? Do you see? You feel anything then? Uh, I, 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 I thought that was your spell. I, I saw this like uh, text and, and these arcane runes appear across the the ball for a moment and then vanish. Uh, but then when I touched it and cast identify, I I couldn't sense any magic apart from the crystal ball. Hmm. Look. <sighs> You did say that these the protection in this in this castle with items and stuff. It wouldn't surprise me if there's something on this ball. We have to keep that in mind. Um, as, uh, hold on a moment. Knowing cursed items are very much a thing, and he's come across many cursed people before. He's going to take a self-preservation action here. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he gets some golden glow flow out from his uh, sleeves and they go, uh, they form into a plate in front of him and he's going to just wash his hand through that plate where he touched the, uh, touched the crystal and do a remove curse. Yeah. Magical uh, hand sanitizer. Yeah, <laughs> magical hand sanitizer. Using the weave to wash your hands. Yeah, Jonah, as you focus and summon this, this silvery bowl of light as you've been washing your hands in the in the light that is summoned by your magic um you cast remove curse uh i mean you feel you feel more secure you feel like if there was a curse that should have dealt with it okay well i was just a little bit spooked by you know some protection possibly on here but i don't feel anything so just don't mind me katarina no, of course. Um, this... We just have to be careful taking it. Um, the uh, my plan was to swap this for um, something more mundane. Uh, I, I wondered if maybe the the magic that was protecting it, we could kind of do a, a quick switch and swap them over. Um, give me a moment. I, I have something for this. And you watch as she reaches down into her pocket and pulls out a silver plate. Hmm. It looked like you, it weighed about the same. To do the swap. Well, I, I did sure. promise I would help you get the crystal ball. Sure. I, yeah, I, was, I mean, I was curious when you told me about it, but did you want... Were you trying to get me to grab it? Uh, not not necessarily. I, I but, but when we spoke, <laughs> it seemed like something you would be interested in. It's just gathering dust down here. I, I've never seen it used. I mean, look at the layer of dust. And she wipes her finger over it and comes away with a thick layer of grime and dust on her fingers. Um, sure. Nothing happens, Joan. Um, you, don't, you don't see anything obvious or anything strange happen as she wipes her finger across it. All seems fine. I want to get a read of, is she telling the truth there? Because leading me to the ball, um, I want to check if she was doing that intentionally or not. Yeah, good time for an inside uh, check, I, I think. <laughs> That's a, a four. Role, nah, man, it's just just you and you and Katarina having a really, really chill time. She's just helping you out after you helped her out. I mean, you guys had a really good chat about divination magic back at the winery. She seemed really interested in what you were doing. You spent a bit of time teaching her some magic. She's just returning the favor. There's, there's nothing to read into here, Jonah. All right, I'll, you know, we all want the good a good future, and this thing will definitely... Um, very well could produce this for us so we'll, yeah i i go to collect the ball yes yeah, so you pick up the crystal ball it feels much heavier than it looks there's a weight to it and as you pick it up and hold on to it you begin to see those clouds of white silvery discoloration begin to swirl around inside the crystal ball and as you gaze into its depths jonor you see a faint pinprick of light right in the very center shafts of this soft illumination piercing through the cloud of discoloration inside that swirls across like clouds in front of a full moon you find yourself drawn into it looking deeper and deeper 
Could I get you to please make me a spell casting check? As if it's spell attack's fine. Just yeah. Spell attack. That's a natural 20. <laughs> hey, yeah. Jonor, it's at this moment you watch as the crystal ball shows you not the future, not the present, but your immediate past. Time seems to slow as you gaze into the depths of this circular, the spherical crystal. You see yourself standing before the crystal ball. As you finish teaching Katarina, you watch as you place your hands upon its surface and time seems to slow. Arcane glyphs etching themselves into the air around the, the, the crystal ball. The pedestal that it's on shifting and changing ever so slightly as the weave is focused through it. And you watch as these threads of magic suddenly seem to spin and shift and pull away. Some of them pierce through your heart, pushing deep within your body, merging almost with the very center of your magic. Others drift upwards and away to a floor high above you. Standing, looking out across the gloom of Barovia, you watch as some of those tendrils of magic swirl around long, claw-like fingers as Strahd captures the essence of the weave, holds it close and examines it for a moment and smiles ever so slightly. Goody. That is an incredible natural 20, Jonah. <laughs> Tom, that was amazing. I did not think I was going to be explaining that tonight. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. This <laughs> Uh, Captain uh, Loot, we are so screwed. <laughs> Captain Loot. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. My loot's better, mate. Got Amazing. more magic. Incredible. Um, Jonah, you may add a crystal ball of mind reading to your inventory. I have sent you the link. This is one of the new items from D&D Beyond. Uh, not D&D Beyond. The one from the new Dungeon Master's Guide, the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide. I guess also technically D&D Beyond. Uh, it is a legendary, uh, <laughs> it's a legendary wondrous item. This one might come with some other things though, as you realize mm. with this sudden moment, as the crystal ball tries to warn you, show you what you missed when you placed your hand upon it. That is incredible. It's looking at me, the subject. Don't blame the tool. Exactly. Divination magic, cool. magic is good. <laughs> It's hard not to blame the tool where the tool is the one picking up the item and going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as he accidentally <laughs> activates. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, perfect. I think with that then, let's jump back upstairs. No, look, let's stay with Jonah for a moment longer. I want to stay with Jonah for a moment longer. Jonah, as you, as you tuck the crystal ball away, you watch as Katarina takes the silvery plate and puts it on top of the pedestal. You watch as the, the clawed base that was holding the crystal ball up shifts and holds the the plate in position so that's now standing upright as katarina kind of looks around and nods and goes i i think that no one's gonna notice uh, he rarely comes down here anymore anyway and i mean he, clearly Rahadan hasn't bothered to dust this area in some time I, th I think i think we'll be fine for some time before he notices this missing maybe don't get it out when you're around anyone else okay it's probably a probably a wise idea with my four Insight. Look, if thieving things is, yeah, a good shout. It's in, in the bag. In the bag. You watch this catch around the uh, <clears throat> Like any other mission, just sort of overwhelmed at this point. I'm just on uh, recover and recoup at this point. I'd probably follow her if we're leaving. Katarina nods and goes, I, I better take you back to your friends now. Um, we'll head back to the dining room and uh, make sure they're okay. I'm sure Grina would have kept them company, though. They would have had lots to catch up on. Yeah, there's, you know, there's history there. And well, thank, thank you for showing me this place. It's very, very fascinating. Oh, my, my pleasure. I, I must say, Grin has been very, um, I, I mean, I, I, very kind. He, he's, he's told me quite a bit about his time adventuring with you and some of the struggles that he had. And it sounds like you were very close. He, he looks up to you. All of you a lot, but um, he does value your your friendship, 
Jono. Uh, and, and your employment? He used to work for you, correct? Yeah. It, he would technically work for me, but we do all... We work with each other. Like, I learn a lot from him. You know, I wasn't um, wasn't too sheltered back in the day, but he, he sort of showed me the more dangerous so, side of the world. You know, you get to go grow, grow close to people. Of course. <laughs> yes. I, I'd love to get out and you travel with some friends sometime. Uh, not sure when, but maybe someday. As she smiles. The future will tell. <laughs> I, I guess it Join will, maybe. Little, with a little wink. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe one day. With that, Katarina leads you back towards the dining hall. As she opens the set of double doors, you see Grinner currently seated um, at the table, completely by himself, smoking on a large cigar. <laughs> As you step in, uh, Katarina goes, w- where are the others? Oh, they fucked off, love. Yeah, they, they said they were going to go uh, to the toilet, I think. But I mean, that was like 30 minutes ago. So clearly they've not gone to the toilet. We have digestive issues, Grinner. You're not Rose there. for an entree. You're disagrees. not there. You're not there. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> as Grinner looks towards you, Jono, he nods and goes, well, what would you two get up to, eh? Not not something. What, what, what were you doing? Um, Katarina was just giving me a little bit of a tour. Like uh, This is a fascinating place, and I just said my bit of the uh, – my places here like this, like temples at home. Oh, look, it's all, it's all right to look at some of the stuff, but, like, it's just a big stone castle, right? It's just a big stone house. Lots of floors, I guess. Some cool stuff on some of them, but, I don't know, give you a tent any day. Pack it up and go where you want. This one's stuck in one place. Yeah, but that, that tent probably won't last, like, 20,000 years, so... Yeah, but you, you, but 20,000 tents will. Probably still cheaper than all this sort of bollocks as he looks around the stone castle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got a, a, a taste of um, a refined taste, ground. I've always thought so. Well, what's what? what are you going to stick around and hang out with me, or are, you'll probably get a fuck off and go look for the rest of them, aren't you? Mm, well, I've got a, got another cigar little... if you want to stay. I'm gonna I'm gonna just stay at the table. Sweet, easy done, Grinner reaches out, pulls another cigar out of his breast pocket. Um, You can see inside the coat, Jonor, um, his inner jacket pocket that has been stitched in. You can see there's another cigar tucked in there, as well as a little tiny leather-bound notebook. Um, And as Grinner opens up his jacket, pulls the cigar out from behind the notebook, um, the notebook sort of tumbles out with it, like rolls across the floor and lands partly open. And you can see it opens with this tight, cramped, very messy scrawl. Grinner sort of like shakes his head, rolls his eyes, passes you the cigar, reaches down and picks up the notebook before tucking it back in his pocket, and then pulls out a box of uh, pulls out a box of well, it wouldn't be matches, would it? I guess he like grabs his cigar out of his mouth and then uses it to light your cigar. Oh, thank you. I handle these very well. You don't. You never took me. Wait, do you not want this? You, you tell me right now if you want this or not. Because if you don't want it, I'll fucking have it. I just thought you might light a cigar. Do you smoke? He just open, open eyes. Yeah, I'll have it. No, no, I don't want to waste your cigar. It's, it's oh, not a waste. No, it's, 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 it's a pretty good cigar. Not going to lie. But if you don't yeah. want it, you tell me right now and I'll save it for some time later. If you want it, I you should you have it. I save it for a nice time. Look, I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you enjoy your cigar. Um, I'll, just, I'll, I'll head up the stairs or where, wherever my, my fellow peers went and just go join them. It's, I'll not take your cigar. You can still sit with me if you're not having a cigar. It's not like a mandatory thing where you want to sort of have to be sitting here with a cigar. You could you could stay and talk if you like. I've I've, I've missed you a lot, you know. Like it's been obviously being really busy here trying Aww. to sort of make Barovia safe, Aww. but I've missed you guys. You've, you got a soft spot in my heart, Grinner. Look, um, I'll just pop my head through there, and you know, I'll I'll see. Give me all right. Give me a moment. You're all right. I I had uh, they went this way. Oh, I don't know. They went out the doors and said they were going to a shitter. All right, and that, which can you point? Well, shit is out the doors and down the stairs, but I, I mean, can't help but hear things, and they, they definitely went up towards the north. I heard them sort of wandering down the hallway, chatting as they went. They weren't very stealthy, you know. I heard the wet plot of something soggy sort of hitting the stairs. Don't know what that was. 
That sounds very interesting. Um, I'm gonna. All right. Well, I'm gonna head that way. Give, give us a moment. I'm gonna go in that direction and do my best to track him down. You watch as Katarina pauses for a moment. It goes. You really shouldn't be wandering the castle without a guide. Um, Grinner and I can go with you. Make sure you're okay. Grinner, why did you let them go without you? You know they're not supposed to wander around without someone. Well, I gave them the option, but they told me they didn't want me to come with them to watch them poop or something, whatever. So I just sort of stuck around here. I, I let them know that they shouldn't go without me, and I gave them many opportunities to change their minds, but they said no. Which is Katarina turns back towards you, Jonor. You, sh- you should take one of us with you. We-, we know the castle where you should be and where you shouldn't be. Uh, uh, me or Grinner, but one of us should come with you. I, I have to insist on this, Jonor. Grinner should have insisted as well. Look, I don't want to cause a hassle. I'll just stay here with you two. I'll keep a flip flop and I'm going to stay on the table. Let's not make this difficult. I, I sit down on the other table and let Jun- Grinner enjoy his cigar. Uh, Grinner, yeah, Grinner enjoys his cigar. Pours you a bit of wine if you want it as well from the carafe. Um, sure. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Easy. I was like, I'll give I'll give Tom this chance to rejoin the others if he wants. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy a nice dinner and have a nap <laughs> is what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> classic. Classic. Any, any opportunity to not have to deal with danger. Hey, Tom. Yeah, apparently so. And to get a nap. And to get a nap. <laughs> Look, and to get gas. Yeah. That, that was just screaming to me that uh, Owen wanted all of the PC characters back together because of what's about to happen. I don't know what you're talking about. You <laughs> I mean just, the summoned monster by the... I just wanted Twitch to make character? sure... <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that the options were available to Jonah. And given that he wasn't here for the session last week... Not last week, the session uh, before that... It was important that he heard the same warning you were given by Grinner about wandering the castle without a guide and that you chose to ignore. It was important context that Jonor knew that you'd ignored that and carried on. Now he knows that and has made a decision not to assist you. I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> I just needed to make sure. Um, hey, I just, I look, my conscience is clear. <laughs> It Much like been. your health is about to be. Uh, as you, as we jump back in with Tithla, Theo, and Killian. Killian, as you yeah. hold the loot in your hands, it is well made. You can see patterns etched across it. Um, it looks like vine-like patterns uh, etched into the body and up the neck of the loot. And the um, pegs that are used to tune it, you can see that they are tiny birds. The, the metal that is used to turn them is actually birds with wings outstretched required to, to tune the loot. It is very beautifully made and it it is untouched by the passage of time. Unlike a lot of the other things in this room that are preserved but marked or tarnished, the loot is, it looks brand new. And given your experience with it, you kind of have it figured out that this is probably magical of some sorts. Um, I'm going to cast identify on it. So right now, run run my hand along the base of it, not touching the strings, but just a little bit of yellow magical energy appears under my hand, and I'm gonna cast identify. Alrighty, could you please roll me a d6? Oh, you certainly can. Because I need to see, oh. I need to see which variation of the magical loot you have. A five. Why? Okay. As you cast identify on the loot. You realize this is not of this world. You can see the magic through the strings, through the wood, the weave tied into every part of this loot. And as you look across it, you can see that this is the symbols, those like Celtic knotworks and swirling patterns of vines that pass up along the body match one of the Bard Colleges from your own home plane. This seems to be a Foklucan loot from the college far to the north in Neverwinter. It allows you to cast a variety of spells. Uh, any creature who attempts to play it without being attuned to it is going to take some psychic damage. Um, and it has a number of spells that you can cast through it. Fly, Invisibility, Levitate, 
Protection from Evil and Good, Entangle, Fairy Fire, Shillelagh, and Speak with Animals. Can I cast Shillelagh on the loot? Yes, Can I yes. Takes loot back from Killian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is technically the Foklukan Bandor, because, but because we've reskinned it as a loot, it's the Foklukan loot. Or the Foklutan, if you will. Is it an actual item, and how the heck do you spell it? It's an actual, actual item. This is one of the instruments of the bards. You don't need to spell it. I'm going to send it to you in the Facebook chat. Is Killian related? This is that magical to everyone else? Because if so, I'm going to try and take that half. <laughs> Uh, well, this is actually quite quite a magical weapon. I'm definitely going to have to use this as my focus. I don't bedoing it because I'm not attuned to it. I go, to, I, go <laughs> make the, I make the bedoing noise, but I don't actually strum it. That's probably a good call. I, I go and give a, the, the smallest little twang of the harp string to see if I take psychic damage from <laughs> It's a magical point. Can you roll me? Can you roll me a D one hundred, please? Has there you go. I've just sent that to you, Josh. You should be able to open that up. Sixteen. Sixteen. As you strum the harp, Tithler and Killian, you hear this beautiful melodic scale as the harp echoes through the empty hall. That sounds pretty good. Theo, you also hear. The wondrous, beautiful music. But then, you watch as the dust begins to push away from the base of the harp. As a area of clear floor, almost like a bubble around you seems to form, pushing the dust and cobwebs away in this almost wave-like form. And then you watch... As emerging from inside the harp, tendrils of mist begin to coalesce, forming spectral fingers that reach out and grab onto your wrist, Theo. Icy pain shoots through your hand as you feel this cold begin to ebb into you. And as you look, you see a shadowy figure made of mist and frost begin to manifest around the harp. I think that... <laughs> this is the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. I don't know. <laughs> no, do you know what? I think we should keep going. <laughs> Let's. I think we should see this through. As you feel this ice begin to pulse through, you see this shadowy, indistinct figure made of frost and mist grab onto you. And as these holes where I should be pierce into your soul, Theo, you hear a voice. Why? It's a good question. It's a very good question. <laughs> I thought you'd be fun and magical like the loot. Not spooky and haunted. Uh, could you do me a charisma check, please, Theo? Uh, this is a performance check, I should specify. Sweet. As, as established, plus six in that. Natural one. Natural one. Thirteen. Okay. The luckiest of all numbers. Uh, you watch as the ghost, this apparition, this specter, tries to form into a more distinguishable, more obvious shape and falls apart, the mist breaking as it tries to grab you. It holds onto your shoulder with its other hand, one hand grabbing your wrist, the other putting its hand on your shoulder as it pulls its head in really close, close enough that you can see almost completely through it. And as those empty eyes bore into you, it again speaks. Why? And then breaks apart into nothingness, fading away. Well, the harp is much less cool. The apparition fades and falls apart, the dust drifting back to the floor again. Shall we get out of this haunted haunted dining room? There's still no there's nothing in here resembling a dragon's head, is there? There's no dragon's head in here. Shall we push on? I think we have um fucked around a bit too much to um be my being missed from dinner. 
I, ha I have to assume Jono's mission went extremely well and smoothly with, with no alerting of, of anyone else around, so we should probably uphold our, our side of that. Yeah, I I just... I don't think we should get to the find out stage of, of the fucking around. I wholeheartedly agree. I agree. Uh, also, um, my... I cast... I had cast locate object the last time in yes. the last session. Uh, it lasts for 10 minutes. Would it still be up at this point? I'm going to say that the last vestiges of it were fading when you stepped into this room because you had cast it downstairs. Oh, no, but you then talked to that that old guy for a long time. Did you cast it again after chatting to yeah. the old guy? You did? I could cast I could cast it again. Yeah, I'd say if, if you haven't cast it after speaking to Leaf, it's definitely finished because you guys were chatting to Leaf for a good chunk of time. For a good um, chunk of time. I, I, I'll cast it again entering into this room then just to see if it's in here anywhere. As you cast it again... Killian, you watch as the needle spins for a moment and points directly to the north west of where you are. If we're still going for the skull, which I totally remembered we were still doing, Foxtrot <laughs> is... I like that chat that had to remind you what you were doing here. <laughs> I think that is incredible <laughs> that without Twitch... <laughs> You would have just gone downstairs again. <laughs> After all yeah, of this, Killian's like, D &D I got, I got, I got my magic loot. Doot, doot, magic loot. I'm done. <laughs> doot, magic loot. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all he cares about. <laughs> I like that you enjoy that, Has. <laughs> doot, doot, magic loot is maybe my favorite quote from the campaign. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, uh, I think we need to go this way, and I've got to point to the northwest. You said, didn't you? So I'm yeah, and there's way. there's two doors in this room: one directly to the west, one directly to the north that you can see. You just pointed to the right corner. <laughs> You're such so an it could asshole. be in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check the corner first before going through the next sets of doors, shall we? I, I just, I just, I'm just. Frog Done. grenading through the western door. Through the western door? Alrighty. Yeah, don't, 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 don't you give me that time. Yeah, through the western door. I'm not <laughs> no matter which door we went through, wouldn't you? Yeah. The northern door. Uh -huh. 100%. If you got north, I would have gone, okay, <laughs> let's go. Um, As you head up, and look through. Are you doing frog grenade or just don't? It sounds like you're going in. You said, I'm done with this. We're going no, in. No, I said frog, frog, frog grenade. I'm going in. Did you say frog? Okay, you did say frog grenade. Yeah. All right, let's go. As you open the door, <laughs> throw the frog in once again, uh, the frog sails in the air for a moment and, and you see a large empty room, an enormous white porcelain bathtub in the center of the room filled to the brim with a dark red liquid. And as the frog sails through the air, you watch as it plunges into the depths of this rather viscous red fluid. And as you gaze through the frog's eyes, Theo, you see nothing but the dull red all around you. Is the frog now just overloaded in his daily dose of iron uh it looks like you have thrown the frog into a bathtub full of blood yeah, and um... just to show you how graphic the image on the map is for this bad boy <laughs> gonna bring us across just so we can all enjoy the image of the bathtub full of yeah. blood because <laughs> it is i like i'll describe the room in more detail but essentially uh, a large room with a bath full of blood kind of sums it up quite well um, not touching that one. I <clears throat> summon the frog back to his pocket dimension and then back back to next to me. Red satin curtains hang in archways at both ends of the south wall in this dark room. A candelabra has been erected next to a porcelain bathtub. Large metal clawed feet holding it a few metres off the floor. Not a few metres, sorry. Holding it a few centimetres off the floor. In the centre of the chamber, a large ornate tub is filled to the brim with blood. Um, where are we going? Oh, oh there's side. one more thing I need to mention. If the if the blood is disturbed in any way, I need to read this out. And throwing a frog into it does count. 
<laughs> an ethereal fey frog. I don't mm. know if it has physical. It does. Yeah, Here's what happens. They're matterless. Here's what they happens. Don't matter. As as you as you resummon as you, as you dismiss the frog. Also, you're the one who made it go in the tub. I didn't say throw it in the tub. <laughs> you said throw it in the room. You're doing. You said throw it in the room, and every time you've thrown it in the room, you've thrown it into the middle of the room each time. This is in the middle oh, of the room. Do you've also determined that every time? I just say I lob it through the door. This yeah. is all you. Give it, guy. Right, give us a strength check. Let's see how much the lob is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> or a dex. No, 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 I, no, no. Roll up this. I didn't want you to know that this is entirely of your doing. All right, it's entirely my doing. As you throw the frog into the bathtub, as you go to dismiss it, you watch as the frog is unable to dismiss. As it rises up from the bathtub, a hand made of blood holding it in place. As it slowly lifts, you desperately reach out and pull the magic back. And for a moment, the frog is trapped starting to dissipate but held by this manifestation of blood before it suddenly collapses the hand crushing in the empty space where the frog once was as you dismiss it back to its pocket plane a ghostly wail begins to echo through the chamber as a su- thank you as a sudden ripple around this bloody hand pulses for a moment and you watch as the hand sinks back into the bathtub. For a moment, everything is silent and still. And then the bathtub explodes, blood showering the walls and the ceiling spraying out across the room as you hear a cackling laughter (laughs) begin to fill the room as a creature made of dark red ichor clutches onto the ceiling, having burst through the center of the tub. And as the blood begins to drain off it and pull onto the floor, you see pale, white flesh, bony, elongated limbs, and stringy hair as it scuttles across the ceiling and down the side of the wall. As it vanishes behind one of the curtains, leaving the room empty and silent, but dripping from every corner with blood. And I think that's going to be a sanity check from Tithla, Theo, and Killian. Would that Is be fair to say? Is it too late to say I didn't want to throw it into the bathtub when I can roll the strength <laughs> check? It's way too late now. I've described this. <laughs> you have to, this is canon now. Uh, and and while, I, while I may occasionally um, retcon things, I'm not retconning this because it's too fucking funny. <laughs> uh, that's a 15 uh, from Tithla. That's a pass, Tithla. Despite how horrifying this is, you do feel okay. You're, you're able to fend off the fear. Look at Tom just really... Tom's just pleased he's not there right now, hey? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to listen to this. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 15 from Theo. That's also a pass. You're both looking good. Killian. What's the sanity check? Oh, did what I not add it? that as a custom uh, stat for your character? It might be on my old character sheet. Ah, okay. That's okay. So it's um, a d20 uh, plus your um, constitution modifier plus either your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Your choice. I'm definitely going to go charisma. <laughs> that's fair. So I'm going to roll that now. It's so just the flat stat of your roll. charisma. So constitution and charisma together. Yeah. So whatever the bonuses for con and charisma are. Not for the saving throw, just for the flat stat. Okay. So... Um... 30, 20, if it's the plus three and the plus four. Yeah, you're completely fine. Um, Tithla, Theo, and Killian, all of you, despite being horrified, despite having this moment of fear grip you, you steady your nerves. As soon as the frog hit the bathtub and the bloody hand emerged, you kind of knew something dark was going to happen here. (laughs) And then a moment later, you watch as the blood covering the walls, the bathtub fade away leaving the room empty and untouched once more. Shall we just pretend that never happened? That was very disturbing. I believe this, I believe on the map I can see a door to, uh, a door the above north. us. To the north? Yeah, yes. and the curtains. Gonna take us to the There's also the two curtains to the south. Fuck the curtains, let's go to the north. Yeah, it takes us to the northwest. So, um, Theo, as you walk over and start removing your pants, grabbing the cur- oh no, sorry, right as you walk towards the north, <laughs> towards, <laughs> as you walk towards the double door, he doesn't wear pants. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. He's Winnie the Poohing this. I'm in Faye formal. <laughs> that's that's very true. Um, instead, we're gonna jump back downstairs to Jonor. Jonor, as you sit there sipping at the, I, I actually I should ask, are you sipping at the wine? 
Mm. Mm, he's thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah, I think I think Jonah would. Also, do we hear that scream? Do I hear that scream? No. And nor do you hear any other distressing sounds from above that would indicate something has gone terribly wrong with your companions. It's like we've been casting our spells silently. Mm. Or, or thrusting some- our daggers silently. Something else has happened. Sitting around just awkwardly, knowing that, you know, Grinners, like, we're, we're all just sitting here waiting for other things to happen. Uh, just to, excuse me for one moment, I might um, just go uh, use the bathroom. Just one <sighs> moment, please. I'm going to head off in that direction. They went. As, as, you, as you stand up and go to walk out, you watch as Grinner rolls his eyes and goes, Joe, don't, don't, don't insult me, right? Look, if you want to use the bathroom, go use the bathroom. But you don't need to lie about it. Just go say you're going to fuck off. It's okay. I understand. You don't trust me anymore. Trust is something that's earned. It's not given. I'll do my best to, to earn it back from you. But it goes both ways, right? You trust me and I'll don't, trust don't you. Don't make me... You t- if you don't, tell don't me... Don't make me lie to you, please. Well, you don't, you, you're choosing what to do. <laughs> you're, you're the one who chooses your actions. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that... Like, if you want to go and look after your friends, that's absolutely fine. We're going to find, a, find our friends. I want to go make sure they're okay as well, but they asked me not to. They told me to my face that they were definitely going to the bathroom and nowhere else. I, I, I'm trying to prove that I, I, I'm, I'm trying to prove that trust is something I'm, I'm given, right? I'm, I'm earning it. If they tell me something, I'm going to believe it. I'm, I'm going to go find the others. Yeah, I thought so. It, it's not a good idea to go wandering off in a castle by yourself. At least take, if you don't trust me, at least take Katarina with you, all right? It's dangerous up there. Yeah, but they're not going to know, she's not going to know where they are. No, but neither do you, and at least she and can I... steer you clear of going into somewhere that's going to get your ass fucking killed, Jono. This place is really dangerous, and you have a bit of a habit of wandering into trouble, and if you're not going to let me go with you to, to keep you out of it, at least make sure Katarina's there to steer you clear. All right, Grinner, come take take me up maybe one one or two levels, and then um, I'll be I'll be okay from there. Yeah, all right. She's not really supposed to go to a second level, but I can get you up at least one level and make sure you're okay. Yeah, let's um let's do that. Thanks for being honest. I I hope me being honest with you's yeah. We're friends, right? We've been friends yeah. for a long time. I just want to make sure you know it's still, still me in here, okay? Yeah, look, Grinner, I believe I believe you're still in there. You're still in there. I believe that. All right, Katarina, we're going upstairs. Don't tell. Well, yeah, we're going upstairs. We're going to make sure the others are okay. Make sure they haven't had something happen to them. Most likely they've happened to someone else, though. That's normally how this shit goes. And with that, Jonah, you and Grinner begin heading out and up the stairs. And I think that is a good place to wrap up tonight because... Uh, yeah (laughs) so thank you so much for joining us everybody that has been buckets of fun um very much looking forward to uh to hopefully tithler and theo finding some things that they might like as well um i have indeed made sure that there's stuff in the castle for everybody uh it is not just special stuff for for jonah and killian special people it's not just special stuff for special people because in my eyes all of you are special so we're making sure that making sure that you get some fun things um so I think that is enough of a spoiler to end on. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. For those of you who are watching us on YouTube or listening to the podcast, thank you so much. It's always lovely that people can come and make a, come and make the stream live and join us. It's always great having Twitch chat to help remind the characters and players where they're supposed to be going and what they're doing and the purpose of their escapades. <laughs> Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> Doot doot magic loot is the I think we need like some artwork of Killian with his loot. Like you know, you know, from the road to El Dorado where he's got like the, <laughs> the loot up. We need one of Killian like that. Go and doot doot magic loot. Maybe that's the redesign of Killian. I should explain to everybody that the reason for this is because the 2020, 2024 rules I've changed Killian so he's now part bard. Exactly. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is this and it's an instrument of the bards that you've picked up, so it does make sense. Now we're forming that, a band. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so thank you so much, everybody who's uh, who's listening to this recorded either on YouTube or on the podcast. It's it's lovely to have you catch up with our previous episodes. For those of you who are watching live, we love you so much. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go and raid a lovely friend of the channel. Let's have a quick look and see who's up and doing stuff. Uh, but for those of you who are watching recorded, make sure 
you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Have you done Curse of Strahd? Did you explore the upper levels of Castle Ravenloft? And did your players also throw a frog in a bathtub full of blood? I think that last one's probably more of that, that seems a bit more unlikely, but hey, <laughs> if, you, if you if you if you didn't throw a frog into a bathtub full of blood, guess what? You now have to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, we got him. <laughs> um, all righty, let's go Surprise. and raid the Eldritch Scribe. We normally go and raid them on a Monday, so let's not break that tradition. Hey, um, thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe, stay well, and I will see all of you for our Return of the Giants session on Wednesday night and our Legacy of Kyoshi on Thursday. Last Thursday, Legacy of Kyoshi was the most chaotic session of D&D or Avatar Legends I have ever run in my entire life. The players just made some incredible decisions uh, back to back to the point where I, I genuinely was crying <laughs> both with laughter and kind of despair <laughs> as to how I was going to describe <laughs> the situation that they got themselves in. It was incredible. Um, so if you haven't been watching the Legacy of Kyoshi campaign, uh, that is a good enough reason to watch it just for the most recent episode because fuck me, it was a shit show. It, like, it put dumpster fires. Dumpster fires look like a candle compared to what they did. Um, if they had chaos that first Blinsky session, that's impressive. They they out chaos the first Blinsky. They've out chaos I've never seen anything like it. I have never seen players just go, like, look at what they're doing and the current plan and turn a full... 180 degrees and go the absolute like it was it was unbelievable i've never seen anything it just like sounds it. like a challenge it yeah, was challenge accepted if you if you can i reckon for the christmas blinsky special i'm gonna no. put okay <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> well that's good to know uh awesome <laughs> thank you so much everybody i'll get this right up and running over to eldritch scribe but We'll see you guys all in the next one. Until then, stay safe and stay well, and we will see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye! Bye. Bye. See you later, Bye. lovelies! Mwah.